Hey guys, and welcome back to another Whiskey on the West Coast live stream. I can see some people already in the chat. Thank you so much, guys, for being here on time. I'm a little bit late. Apologize, but uh, we're just figuring out the camera there. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, blends. In, in particular, uh, it's going to be a blind blend tasting battle here. Uh, because, as you know, you're always influenced by other factors when you're reviewing or tasting a whiskey. And I wanted to try and give some whiskeys in particular another look, but from a different angle, blind. Uh, so we'll get to what whiskeys are in the blind blend battle shortly but i'm just so excited to be back with another live stream it's been a long time guys i had an extended uh, period of sickness that was just it was rotten i know greg uh, gregoire uh greg's whiskey guide you're in here i know you had some uh, troubles with the same sort of thing too um but this this just persisted for like six seven weeks um but i'm so happy so excited to be back and uh yeah i'm gonna check in with the chat here and then we'll get right to our topic all right in the comments i see andrew butler's here hello andrew thanks for joining tyler cy's whiskey wire buddy i'm wearing the canucks hat today because obviously it's game day uh game in a couple hours against the anaheim ducks hopefully you get a big win uh you know opening weekend for the mlb toronto blue jays uh if you guys haven't checked out tyler's uh uh youtube channel and instagram check it out he's doing some great stuff had so much content for uh St. Patrick's Day, man. Uh, great job. Gregoire, again, hello. Uh, thanks for joining. Ollie from Paris. Yeah, I see you're busy preparing a lot of stuff. Um, post for tomorrow. That's awesome. I'll have to be checking them out. Uh, you always got something cooking, uh, something coming up here, Greg. Thanks for uh, thanks for uh, showing up for the live. Really appreciate it. All right. So uh, today, let's let's get to the topic and uh, and and start uh, drinking. Hopefully, you're drinking along. If you are drinking along today, if you're having a, a tipple, if you're uh, having a dram, let me know in the chat what you're drinking today. And uh, yeah, let's get to this. So uh, much like the last bracket that I did, uh, where we did you know uh, top ten affordable sort of thing, um, blind. Uh, I wanted to go ahead and kind of use the same concept: six whiskeys in a blind. A couple to kind of throw me off the trail, the ones I'm particularly wanting to kind of probe and test out. Um, and then, uh, yeah, a couple of just like wild cards, really. So we'll get to the the, the actual uh, how this looks like. So it's going to be a, a bracket much like last time. So it's going to be uh, three pairs. Um, we're going to do two, two, two. And then we'll have the three winners from those brackets up against each other in a final round to determine a winner. And again, we're just doing this to kind of uh, remove some of the pretense that comes with, you know, whiskeys being more expensive, whiskeys being more hyped, um, some things that typically you think would be more your preference, but you don't really know unless you test them out. All right. So what's in the blind battle today? Blind blend battle. So going to throw McLean's nose into uh, into the battle here. I had to. There's so much hype, so much uh, lovely praise for. I really enjoyed uh, the beginning of my bottle here. Um, it's quite the astounding product to come out at such a price. Um, so this whiskey, it's 46% ABV, it's non-chill filtered, it's natural colored, uh, quite a large outturn. You can see there are 25,000 bottles. Um, X bourbon and X sherry, it is 70% malt, it's 30% grain whiskey. And the uh, malt whiskey is coming from uh, Arden Merkin, both in X bourbon and sherry casks, as well as Glen Scotia from, uh, I believe, refill bourbon casks. Um, now the grain element, I believe is North British and it's all under six years old. I can't remember the exact age. I believe it's like four to six years old is the, uh, the whiskey in the McLean's nose. So that's one of our competitors here today. Next up is the Thompson brothers, Thompson bros, SRV five, uh, blended malt. So this is the station road, uh, station road VAT five. So this is kind of their Solera system. Uh, blended malt so they re remove about two-thirds of the the vat re uh, keep one-third uh, as a starter for the next batch and then they fill it back up and let it marry and age over time and that's something thompson brothers is really uh keen on is giving enough time for these whiskeys to integrate um there's been a number of batches this is not uh batch zero zero two uh, but it is 48.5 abv it's non-chill filled natural color and it's relying on ex bourbon casks um in, in its cask makeup so that's second competitor here we have 
Thompson Bros, TBBSW, six-year-old, blended scotch. So this is a blend of both malt and grain. And again, a lot of buzz on this. I believe this was an Oswa Award winner for best blend, uh, blended scotch. Six years old. A lot of rumors about this being about like 12-year-old Macallan blended with some grain accidentally. Um, all rumors, all conjecture. I'm not really sure what it is. But it has a six-year-old age statement. And it, it, it certainly seemed to me like it drank uh, a lot older than six years old and with a high malt content. As you can tell by the color there, with this being on chill filtered, it's natural color. That color there, uh, in this case, is coming from uh, Oloroso cast. And they really wanted to make kind of like an old school blend it was their, their inspiration for making this. And again, give it a lot of time to, to marry. Our fourth competitor is one I have never tried before. It's the Dumbarton Rock blended malt scotch whiskey. And it comes to us from an independent bottler uh, group called Dram Moore. It's a family-owned uh, independent bottling company. So this is not actually available for sale in my market. Actually, of the first four, the only one that's available in Canada so far is McLean's Nose. And that's, uh, I believe that's only in Alberta so far. This is 46% ABV. I know uh, from looking it up uh, prior to the live it is a composition of four ex bourbon casks and uh, one uh, sherry cask. This is non chill filtered. It says it right on the label, but it does have color added to it. So that's not natural color that you're seeing in that picture there. Now, Dram Moore Group, they recently came to Canada uh, by way of Alberta once again with their independent bottlings. And I actually was at Whiskey Global in Vancouver. And the, how I got a sample of Dumbarton Rock is because I actually ran into the, the owners uh, of, uh, of Dram Moore. And this picture here is uh, it's myself as well as uh, Kenny McDonald and uh, I believe it's Victoria, uh, his wife. And then in the middle there uh, is, uh, uh, is uh, Lily, Celine uh, uh, Lily Tutu uh, from uh, Elixir Distillers. She's the brand rep. Uh, for them and she, she was lovely to uh, talk whiskey with as well but uh, Kenny uh, Kenny had some uh, samples in, and uh, Victoria there as well uh, you can see them in her on her arm there um, and they handed them off uh, to me and said hey check these out give them a try and I, I'm, I'm really appreciative for that uh, really kind uh, gesture um, and so if you're not familiar with Dram or I'm just going to pull the slideshow back here for a moment their bottlings look just like this here. So if you've ever seen them on the shelf, this is an example of a 15 year old inch fad out of Amontillado Sherry casks. Haven't cracked into that one yet, but I'm very excited to in the near future. Okay. Before we get to two more wild cards, because those are the four I really wanted to test and, and probe and prod and, and kind of see how they perform blind. I'm going to check into the uh, chat here once again. If I can get the chat to work for me. All right. Let's see here. We have Anthony. Anthony checking in. Even brothers surrounded by five Canadians in North Wales. This uh, The spring bank is out. Nice. Um, awesome to bring out the good stuff there uh to share with friends five canadians i'm wondering what the story is there uh five canadians north wales so uh hello to my uh, fellow countrymen and or women uh abroad in wales uh kind of wish i was joining you that sounds like a good time andrew's saying uh he's not dramming along right now it's just coffee yeah you know what i understand that i had a coffee just before this too it's uh just after 11 a.m pacific time here on the west coast all right, and Tyler, you're digging into Ardbeg. I know, really digging it. Yeah, I've, I, you know, I've heard people say that it's a little too light for them. I've heard other people say it's a really wonderful expression of Ardbeg. I have actually yet to try I know. so that's something I got to put on my list here. All right, and yeah, 2 p.m. on the East Coast. <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. Oh man. I have uh, relatives out in Nova Scotia, and they're four hours ahead of us. We live in the same country, but four time zones away. It's crazy. Uh, Greg updating us here. Can't release a video tomorrow as you're uh, you're still on sick leave. Okay. But a lot of posts related to special French spirits day tomorrow. Oh, awesome. Some updates on French whiskey. Yeah, you've been the obviously the, the go-to source for French whiskey over the last year. It seemed like you really focused uh, on it and with uh, Whiskey Live uh, Paris, I believe it was. 
Awesome. And it's 7 p.m. there in Paris. And then one more from Greg here. I recently reviewed on my YouTube uh, community page this Dumbarton Rock and was reserved about it. Well, I love the single malt samples I got. Uh, Kalima, yeah. So okay, we. It sounds like we're we're kind of um, approaching these in the same way. I'm not sure how I'm gonna feel about it, but uh, I did see uh, your your post there um, as I was going along with my day. Yeah, Watchman 999. Thanks for checking in there, <laughs> Tater. <laughs> Tater Dom. Thanks for checking in, Tater Dom. All right, let's get back to uh, let's get back to business here. So yeah, lovely people, lots of fun, great talking uh, whiskey with them. You can see the passion is is all over um, the the uh, with with Kenny and Victoria there. So next up, our fifth contestant in this uh, blind blend battle is the Naked uh, Malt Blended Malt Scotch Whiskey. Now in my area, this is forty three percent ABV. It's colored. It's chill filtered. Um, so it's not necessarily a, a nerd's uh, sort of dram, but I was able to pick it up for $35 Canadian. And that's about the cheapest blended malt I can pick up in my market. So I am going to um, I'm going to have to make sure to, uh, I guess, give this some consideration. I mean, when it comes in at such a great price point, I'm curious how it's going to perform in a blind. I, I really am. So, and this is uh, from Edrington Group stock. So, I mean, if we wanted to try and guess what's in it, I mean, Edrington owns, you know, Highland Park, McAllen, uh, Glenrothes. They could have bought some uh, other casts or traded for casts and put some other things in here, but it's all malt. And they finish it in first fill uh, sherry casks. Uh, so, yeah, really interesting whiskey uh, for the price. And our final uh, bottle in this blend battle is going to be uh, actually, a real wild card here. Um, something that I don't think has very broad distribution, but I'm really curious how it's going to fare. And that is uh, that boutique whiskey company's batch one of the St. Thomas 32 year old blended scotch whiskey. Uh, it's got this really cool label with this cute Highland Q on it. Um, and it, it, it's playing around with a lot of different, you know, they, they like to have a lot of fun uh, with uh, that boutique whiskey company. Um, and so they put things like extra special on there. The names here, I think, re re refer to some people who work at the company. Uh, Worthington's finest uh, oak casks. Uh, Dave Worthington uh, is uh, with the company as well. It comes in a 500 uh, milliliter bottle. Um, so it's a smaller bottle than uh, we're typically used to with uh, whiskey. Uh, and so a couple things to note with this. It's 40.1% ABV which just screams to me that they had an older cask of whiskey that they were trying to blend up. They were trying to blend up this whiskey. It would be my assumption. Uh, they had dropped below the 40% ABV mark and it had to be brought back up to be used. They probably tasted it and said, hey, this is still really good, really flavorful whiskey. Uh, we need to find a way to, to save this. And so I'm guessing that uh, that's exactly what they did. Um, I'm, so I'm assuming the 40.1% it's going to be cast strength. That's just a really odd ABV. Um, but yeah, 32 years old. So this has got the age. I don't know what the malt to grain percentage is in this. Um, but it's going to be really interesting to see how this fare is blind with everything else. Will I be able to, to taste the age on this? Uh, that is the question. All right. So that's our chaos agent. I love to add a little bit of chaos in the morning. All right. So here we go. This is the whole lineup right here. So McLean's Nose, SRV5, Thompson Brothers, BSW, six-year-old, Dumbarton Rock, Naked Malt, and the St. Thomas 32-year-old blend. Okay, checking into the comments here. I'll leave that up so you guys can keep uh, pondering what you think might happen with these whiskeys. Oh, good. <laughs> you, you got my back there, Tyler. Canucks and Ducks are on tomorrow, so no rush. Oh, that's that's a relief. Uh, because uh, I'm also heading into Vancouver tonight for the Whitecaps game um, against the Portland Timbers. So that just spreads out the sports uh, the sports weekend a bit. That's awesome. Greg, special video about French whiskeys, mainly in English, is coming up next week. Nice. Awesome. I will definitely uh, check that out. Probably uh, I, I most of the time when I'm listening or watching YouTube videos, I'm not actually watching them. 
I usually have it in my pocket because um, with YouTube Premium, you can you kind of lock the screen. I just go for walks on the river out in nature, go for hikes, and I listen to uh, to whiskey stuff to keep up with what everybody's saying. But it's not really very conducive to me leaving comments. <laughs> so I, I, I definitely should make sure to leave a comment when I watch it this time. And then uh, used to drink that one. It used to be called Naked Gross. And it was a blended scotch. Rather nice. Uh, I like the the new one, but feel like it has lost something. Good grains, in my honest opinion. Okay. Yeah, it did go through that change there. It's been through a, a number of different monikers. Um, yeah, I mean, I kind of liked the branding more with, with Naked Gross as opposed to Naked Malt, but uh, branding is only branding. If you think it's lost a step uh, since it's changed, uh, that's interesting to note. Uh, Greg, Matt, if you are buying anything on the Kingdom you know, a sale today, I could bring your order to you in May. Oh, awesome. Okay, that's uh, thank you for the the offer there. That's great. Uh, I'll uh, consider that and check in. Are 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 you picking up anything from the KWM sale? I know you're in town there. It'd be uh, it would be oh so tempting for you, I'm sure. They have some great prices right now. Kensington Wine Market is probably my favorite whiskey store in the entire country, and they do amazing things. I met uh, Andrew Ferguson at the uh, Victoria Whiskey Festival, which was an absolute trip. That was crazy. Lots of fun. Uh, as well as uh, Harmony and Evan. Um, yeah, the Kensington Wine Market crew, they just do such a great job with uh, with whiskey and well, just everything they do, rum and, and cognac, Armagnac, tequila. Yeah, can't say enough good about the Kensington Wine Market staff. So uh, yeah, hey, what are you picking up? All right. And uh, Greg says, uh, good call, but I'll add either a non-40% cask plus Dunnage Warehouse maturation for sure. Okay. Oh, uh, looks like uh, Tyler sub to uh, Greg's channel. Check it out tonight. Awesome. I love when stuff like that happens. And uh... <laughs> we're getting to the other comments. Greg, I may have lost my willpower online today when I saw some of the prices. I know, man. I know. I'm going to talk a little bit about prices a little later on. I got a little whiskey news segment I'm going to throw in in between uh, brackets here. We're going to talk about prices mainly in relation to uh, Bunahaven and uh, some independent bottling companies as well. Um, so I'm going to be really interested, uh, yeah, to see where prices go in the next six months to a year. Awesome, and yeah, Greg, yeah, KW and crew is awesome. Yeah, that's that's an understatement. They are just uh, crazy good people. Love whiskey, and I really just appreciate them uh, greatly. All right, let's get to our first bracket here. We're going to start off with, uh, we're just going to go in order. So I'm going to go gold glass versus the green glass. After that, we'll hit blue versus black, and then red versus the clear glass here. All right. All right, guys, thanks for joining me here on Saturday on Easter uh, long weekend. Uh lunch. I suppose I should show you guys, uh... oh, man. I'm liking that nose already. Okay, I suppose I should show you what letters on the bottom here. So I'll bring up the answer key for you guys again. And so you know what I have in my glass. Okay, so I'm lifting that up to the camera, looking for a thumbs up. Yeah, I think you guys can see it there. Okay. So you guys know what I'm drinking. I I do not. This has a really nice. Hmm. There's almost like a meaty characteristic to this. Some like black licorice. Yeah. Maybe some fennel too. I'm gonna guess that there's some sherry cask influence in here for sure. Touch waxy too, though. Some vanilla icing notes, though. Hmm. First one's always the toughest one because you're not side by side anything yet. Just by itself. But I'm going to say sherry cask influence here. Barely engaging enough nose. Kind of coat the edge of the glass here, see what's up. Blind tasting is always um, intimidating for me. 
I mean, even though this is only semi-blind, it's it's a, it's a tough thing. So when I pe see people really pull it off well on like uh, on Aquavite's channel, it's uh, it's always really impressive. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna put that down and uh, take a crack at the nose and the green glass here. So once again, I'll show you guys what letter that is. Not looking. Hopefully you can see that there. I'll pull up the chart again so you can see what one that is. Start nose in that glass. Oh, wow. Okay. There's some like, feels like there's some tropical fruits in this. Yeah, more like pear. Maybe some um, melon. I feel like there might be some green in this, though. Definitely more on ex-bourbon, I'd say, less on sherry. More shy, I'd say, than the last nose. Malt characteristic is strong with it, though. I'd say some boiled sweets in there too, like hard candies. Very interesting. Okay, I'm going to grab both these at the same time. Then we'll go ahead and uh, take a sip, see what's going on. First glass actually noses quite a bit lighter now after that second one. Yeah. Yeah, actually, the green glass is now coming off quite a bit more robust than when I first approached the gold. All right, we're going to take a sip of the gold here. Catch some comments before they fly away. Greg, trust you guys about KWM. I, I hear only good things from all channels I watch and from the subs, too. Yeah. They are a must, uh, a must visit if you ever go to Calgary. $28,000 off of the Gordon and McPhail 80-year-old Glenlivet. I mean, you, you have to pick that up then, right, Peter? Peter, thanks for checking in, man. You have a crazy whiskey collection from what I can recall and from the bottles that I've seen show up on uh, Rob and Jeremy's channels. Um, yeah, that, that's a crazy bottle, that uh, Glenlivet. I'm not going anywhere near that one. Not with the... Uh, a 10-foot barge pole is uh, what Ralphie would say, I suppose. All right, taking a sip. Okay. Definitely can pick up malt. I think there's some green in this, too. The um, black licorice... And, and what I'm guessing are some sherry tones are coming through. Really, really strong on the uh, dessert tones, on the um, caramel toffees, like powdered sugar. Hmm. A bit of pepper around the edges of the tongue. Bit of spicing. It's not more like uh, baking spice, though. It's more like just pepper itself, like black pepper. There is a, a, a nice finish to it, a malty finish, a bit of oak. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, trying to get my bearings so early in the morning here. Let's see. Off the glass, too. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So I'm definitely picking up mainly like ex bourbon traits with this. Again, some some fruit, nice clear malt, a bit of meatiness to the palate. Again, I'm not sure what it is this morning, but I'm also picking up like black licorice, uh, anise, um, a bit of fennel. It's nice oak. To it as well 
Um, yeah, let me consider the finish on this sip. Hmm. Yeah, the palette's really enjoyable. Um, palette's, again, going on more of those dessert tones with a bit of uh, herb herbaceousness, too. I'd say there's a bit of, like, an orchard fruit element to it, like uh, apples, pears. Not so much, like, really dark sherry tones. I think there's a bit of sherry, and that might be where those herbal elements are coming from with, like, the licorice and such. Uh, but I am... Yeah, I'm really... Um, that's really fascinating. Hey, man, oh man, I think, I think I, the, the, the first glass there on the nose and immediately by itself was actually fairly enjoyable, but it's kind of been drowned out by this green glass here. Let's take a moment here and uh, check out some comments while I ponder what I'm going to say about these glasses here. All right. Let's see, we have, yeah, no, that uh, Gordon McPhail, uh, eighty-year-old Glenn Livet, uh, regularly one hundred and forty thousand dollars. What was it? Twenty-eight thousand dollars off. Yeah, yeah, it's still still a, a second mortgage, <laughs> or for me, a first mortgage to pick up that bottle. No, thank you. Uh, let's see. Greg, you uh, you so dared to mix blended malts and blended scotches. It'll be interesting to see if yeah, you pick the grain in the in the BSW. Yeah, yeah, in the blended whiskeys versus the blended malts. That's really one of the things I'm really interested in and in trying to pick out here for sure. I'm actually erring towards the fact I said I might have picked up a bit of a grain note uh, on one of them, but I think actually um, these are both going to be blended malts. Um, I, I think there's just enough um, texture and grip on these palettes that I think these are going to both be blended malts. Uh, Greg, your oldest Glenlivet is the 32-year-old Berry Brothers and Rudd. Uh, so more modest. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but give or take 50 years. Watchman 99 sample from Whiskey and Six, pretty good. Uh, KWM and shipping is a bit of a production. So, unless Rob or someone is putting an order together, I usually stay away. Yeah, I get that. Um, with Kensington Wine Market, they don't want to break, you know, provincial shipping rules, all that. Uh, they want to stay above board with all the laws and legalities. So, they don't directly ship to anybody. You basically have to get it packed by them for shipping. They charge for that. They have to get uh, some other entity to pick it up for you, which is a big cost it's it's more expensive to ship from them than any other store in um in alberta but oftentimes with their cask picks um and sometimes with their sales it's it's worth it, it also helps if you have a mule like uh, watchman 999 uh to pick it up for you <laughs> all right a few more comments here <laughs> it still receives the malt messenger uh, emails to torture yourself. Yeah, when I see those Malt Messenger emails come in, uh, say if I'm at work uh, in between things, they're like a stop everything must read sort of thing. And they can be torturous uh, to stay away from. Yeah, okay. So this gold glass, there's for sure a good amount of sherry on it. Yeah. It's, I think it's more present on the nose than it is on the palate. Yeah, the palette, there is um, a little touch of leather and tobacco sort of thing. And um, I'd say almost like a bitter grape note. Um, but again, that licorice is coming through. The malt's coming through. A bit of vanilla. I'm going to suggest that that definitely has a good amount of sherry influence on it. But it just doesn't come through in the way I would prefer in the palette. But um, still a really good drinking whiskey. If I was drinking that uh, on a, a nice day, not wanting to fuss too much, say if I'm distracted with you know working on something around the house, that's still a really decent malt. All right. Second glass. So we roll through these comments. 
Sugar Kitty, meow, meow back. Thanks for checking in. Where where are you located, Sugar Kitty? I was actually having this conversation the other day. Like, I'm not exactly certain I know where you are. Uh, if you're in Europe, if you're in America, I think you're in the States, but maybe you're in Canada. I don't know. Uh, oh, geez. Sheldon, noteworthy whiskey. Congrats on the 2K. Glad I could catch you live. Thank you so much, Sheldon. You're such a huge friggin' support. Um, man, that's super kind and incredibly generous. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I can't say enough good about what you're doing on Instagram. I want to keep up, uh, keep tabs on it more uh, than I do. Um, and we should collab on something in the future. I think that would be a lot of fun, honestly. Um, I have trouble with Instagram because I. I'm really bad with social media. <laughs> You'll kind of see. Uh, I go long distances between posts on Instagram. But Sheldon, you're you're all over that Instagram thing, man. You've got that dialed into a fine science. Uh, so everybody, check out uh, Sheldon's noteworthy with wi wi noteworthy whiskey Instagram account. Uh, and thank you again so much, Sheldon. That's really super kind. Thanks for being here. Uh, Raise this glass to you, Slunge. Hmm. Yeah, so I think there's a more interesting balancing act going on in this green glass and this gold. Definitely picking up ex-bourbon elements with almost like accents or flares of sherry. Um, and again, mostly coming across in that herbality, um, licorice notes, these sorts of things. Bit of like um, old books or leather kind of tone too. The nose, well, I liked kind of the fruiting on it. And some spice, actually. There's some good spice in there. This is growing on me. Whereas I feel like I'm leaving the gold behind. So um, not to waste and dabble too much time. I actually kind of want to dig into this a little bit more. But I'm going to stick with my, my hunch here. I think they're both blended malts. I think... They both have an influence from ex-bourbon and sherry. I think the gold glass has more sherry influence. Um, but I think I'm enjoying the green better. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go and um, say right now that the green is the winner of this first bracket. And um, yeah, green's the winner of this first bracket, which eliminates gold. So we'll do a reveal on what gold is. And uh, we'll check into the comments we'll get to some whiskey news and then uh and we'll get to the second bracket all right so i'll show you guys one so actually i'll put up the uh i'll put up the I'll add to stage our our chart to keep track so you guys know what this is for me showing you the bottom of this glass I can't see that there, but we're going to do the reveal. It's gold. We got this handy dandy sign Kyla made here. <laughs> you can tell it's been a little bit since I posted one of these. All right. We got Kyla's beautiful answer key she made me here. So we're going to do a reveal on gold. All right. Thanks, Kyla, for making this. Gold. C and C on the chart is. Naked malt. Naked malt. Okay. So that makes a lot of sense because uh, they have that finishing in, um, in first of all, sherry casks. Uh, but it is a 43% ABV whiskey. So I could see how the, the palate wouldn't have as much grip and texture as uh, the other whiskey uh, that was in that glass. Unless perhaps if it was the uh, St. Thomas blend, because that's the only one lower in ABV in here than that. So that would eliminate this bottle of naked malt here. Now, the thing is, uh, again, I really enjoyed this naked malt. And uh, as you can see, I've gone through quite a lot of this bottle. I only got this bottle in the fall. And I don't, I try not to drink whiskey too, too fast, you know, for health reasons, all that responsible drinking, guys, uh, take care of your health. Um, but it's a very easy um, whiskey to drink without having to think about it too, too much. If you're just looking to entertain people, maybe you have some people who aren't always whiskey drinkers over Great bottle. And again, $35. You can't really go wrong. Not that there's any losers in this uh, blind. Uh, but if there is, I guess this this is uh, this is the first one. It's Naked Malt Eliminated. 
All right. Checking with some comments. So we got, uh, okay, lots of chatter, lots, lots of talk about uh, Glenn Livett and Kinston Wine Market. People saying hi, love to see that. Yeah, uh, I see Peter, you're talking about shipping uh, orders from Ontario, having friends that would ship for them. Uh, yeah, it really, if you have someone reliable, I, you know, Kyla has um, a, a brother in Calgary. So oftentimes he's shipping bottles for me in his luggage, which is a big help. Uh, so thanks, Ty. Uh, don't think you're watching, but Tyler, really appreciate uh, all the whiskey mule uh, assignments you've taken over the past number of years since you moved to Calgary. Peter White, talking about macaronis. I released a macaronis review yesterday. Uh, check that out, guys, if you have any interest in uh, West Coast whiskey from uh, the West Coast of Canada. We got a macaronis Kildera recently. Quite good. Yeah, they've had a lot of success with their triple pot still uh, distilled whiskey. I believe that's a triple pot still. Um, triple distilled pot still whiskey, uh, the Kildera. Um, there's also actually, if you guys are interested, in Irish Rovers whiskey that uh, Hamish, the whiskey surfer on Instagram, helped put together for the Irish Rovers, the band, uh, a band I listened to quite a lot as a kid. Um, and so he put together a whiskey and it's on sale on Macaloni as Island Distillery website right now. That's actually a sister cast to the one that won an award at the World Whiskies Awards. Um, so that's really, really interesting. But yeah, I'm glad you're enjoying that Macaloni's uh, bottle there, Peter. They do ship to Ontario from the distillery is my understanding. So if you're in Ontario, you're having trouble getting that stuff. Um, yeah, uh, check that, check out their website. Cause that might be what you need. Yeah. We're in here. Canucks, uh, cap proudly this season. Heck yeah, my friend. Heck yeah. Um, hell of a season. Um, still have that Canucks PTSD trauma in me that says this can't be, this can't be real. And, uh, you know, something is gonna happen. We're going to regress all those things, but you know what? I'm just going to enjoy it now. Just enjoying the ride got what like 10 games left in the season um still within striking distance of a president's uh, trophy though we kind of know how that ends 2011 2012 so president's trophy isn't all it but we want some good playoff seating so yeah no happily proudly wearing the caps but i've always wore the caps I, i'm not a bandwagon fan can't can't be that bandwagon fans can stay off the bandwagon they're not allowed back on Peter White, stores in Alberta can now ship to Ontario without any issues. Yeah, I saw that change. I think it was in January. Um, so maybe KWM will pick up on it and uh, we'll be able to, um, you know, start shipping straight to Ontario. I'm sure that would be a big boon for you. Greg, uh, forgot I could do it with the phone. Meanwhile, just sub to your channel. Yeah, hey, sub to Whiskey Wire. Awesome. Sugar Kitty, just because I live in New Jersey. <laughs> doesn't make me a jersey boy <laughs> i'm a pennsylvanian by birth and by culture all right all right it helps place me where you are in the world awesome thanks for that sheldon thanks a lot sounds great to me yeah okay we'll have to talk man and uh watchman oh thank you very much watchman i guess i keep forgetting this is a, like beginning of march we had to we hit our 2k mark um, so this is a kind of a 2K celebration. I don't like to to make it too much about me and and the channel. So um, thank you so much for that uh, that super chat, Greg. Congrats on 2K, Matt. Homegrown Western Canada content and Mount GM in the background is a great combo. Yeah, you know it, man. Um, when you're when you're passing through here in uh, in May, uh, we'll make sure to link up again. Uh, probably uh, pass off some samples for sure. Um, it was good meeting you last time for the first time, and we'll have to keep that up. And maybe, just maybe, Victoria Whiskey Festival? Huh? We'll see. That'd be cool. Uh, it was so much fun last year. I'd recommend the Victoria Whiskey Festival to everyone. Just, just ask Leanne Scotch on the Bayou. She continuously references the Victoria Whiskey Festival. But thank you so much. That's super kind, super generous, uh, Watchman. I really appreciate that, man. Okay. Let's get to uh, some news quickly here. Yeah, I won't lose track of these comments. We got lots of comments to get back to. First thing I want to talk about, we got some exciting releases um, in Canada. I know there might be old news, old hat for people in Europe or the UK, uh, but Tour Vague, 
I've been excited for these guys to finally get to Canada. I believe last week they finally released in Alberta. Uh, and again, Alberta gets everything, it seems, before everybody else. But Torveg, uh, they are the other distillery on the Isle of Skye. And the reason why I say it that way is when they uh, started, when they were founded, they actually forced the big boys, Talisker and Diageo, to change their boxes and their labels where it proudly declared the only distillery on the Isle of Skye. Well, now I think it says what the oldest distillery on the Isle of Skye. Well, I like it when the uh, when the small guys uh, force a change from the big guys. Uh, so that, that's pretty cool. So there's some really cool things about these releases. Now, the, the first whiskey I actually had on my visit to Scotland was in a bar in Edinburgh. And it was actually the Tour of Hig Alt Glean. And that's a release. It's first fill and refill ex bourbon casks that they use for cask uh, makeup. One of the interesting things about these Torveg releases is that they actually tell us both the in-grain phenol level. So, you know, when you're hearing, you know, Octomore, you see all those PPM levels or you see it uh, marked for other bottlings where it's like 40 PPM, 35 PPM. All those measurements, to my knowledge, have always been in-grain before distillation. They take a reading and they say, oh, yeah, it's for Octomore like 9.1. I think it was like 156 PPM. Well, it gives us that in-grain PPM rating of 78 PPM. But it also will tell us then the residual phenol level. So what's actually left in the whiskey, what's actually in the bottle, and which for the batch strength, the stats here I have are for the batch strength, 78 plus ppm. And then for the batch strength in the actual whiskey itself, it's 22.8 ppm uh, for the all glean batch strength. That's a really interesting change and a really fascinating way to look at it because everyone's distillation processes are different. The, the, the barley itself is traveling from greater distances. Do you lose any of the phenols when shipping it? Like all these sorts of things will impact and, and matter. And so I think it's a really um, positive change to actually tell us what's in the bottle as opposed to what's prior to distillation. If you can give us both, that's even better. Um, and I believe the actual uh, just regular Tor of Egg Old Glean is 17, around 17 for residual phenols. And that's just because they have to water it down. Um, so you lose some of the, the phenols when you add the water to it. That makes sense to me. Now, something that is really also cool about the Torveg uh, distillery is that they have this thing called the Journeyman Project. Uh, and the first of these Journeyman's Drams uh, releases is expected to be in 2024. I'm going to pull this off here, but um, the Journeyman Project is essentially they have a staff of distillers. They have a distilling team as opposed to just a master distiller. And their distilling team... I believe around six weeks of the year, two of them get to make absolutely whatever they want, whatever they want. They can uh, play with, say, fermentation times, barley varieties, um, yeast types, obviously cask type, uh, cut points, uh, how much it's peated, whether it's unpeated or peated. They can do whatever they want. They get to call the shots. And that's a really exciting thing. It's giving them free reign for um, freedom of expression and to actually make something that they think would be super cool, super experimental, or something that just fits their palette. I think that's a super cool thing um, to do. And so apparently we should expect to see the first of these Journeyman Drams released in 2024. Um, that's super exciting. I definitely want to pick up a bottle of Tour of Egg. Um, they uh, just seem to be doing uh, a lot of things right at least from the whiskey nerd side of things. No slate to Talisker. I enjoy Talisker, but the Diageo of it all uh, gets me down sometimes with their presentation and their prices. I mean, Talisker 10 is $130 after tax in uh, in my market. I'm not paying $130 for Talisker 10. Never, ever. All right. Check out, catch up a few more comments here. Uh, let's see here. Funny story from CYS. The price difference in Ontario is such that buying a bottle of Glenfarclas 15 and Port Charlotte 10 plus shipping from BC was cheaper than Glenfarclas 15 at the LCBO. Yeah, that's that's exactly kind of like my uh, my, my my boat here too, uh, Tyler, is that I can buy a bottle plus an extra bottle with shipping from Alberta for the same price as one of those bottles here. It's just ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous, the prices in BC. And you see it the same in uh, Ontario. Craig, Greg Barr, oh, buddy. Thank you so much, man. Um, that's super friggin' generous. I really appreciate that. While we're at celebrating, here's some more for a future celebration, Dram. Matt, I'm really a, a fan of your channel. Cheers. Um, 
there's the 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 fan the fan is a uh, mutual there greg i'm i'm a fan of what you're doing on your channel too and i just yeah i really appreciate that man that's that's incredibly incredibly generous um yeah i don't know what to say uh i love um I, i'm just yeah i'm blown away by you guys' support and you guys showing up here and uh and and just watching the videos yeah i, I never would have expected that uh there would have been uh, people that just want to dram along, talk, and uh, and 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 just enjoy whiskey in this way with me. So yeah, always humbled by it, and thank you so much. Okay, we're gonna leave the comments for a moment here uh, with this one. Oh, another mule in Calgary. You are set for life. Yeah, I don't know if my wallet's set for life. My wallet, I don't think likes uh, the number of mules I have available to me uh, sometimes. Okay. Second bracket, let's get to this. So we're going to be uh, pitting the blue versus the black. The gold was eliminated. I'm going to move that glass out of the way. Make sure it's out of the picture. Okay, we're, we're set. So green is on to the next round. Picking up the blue glass. Oh, wow. Okay, that is all butterscotch and vanilla. I guess I should show you guys the, uh, the label there. Hopefully you saw that. Vanilla butterscotch. Oh, pears, apples, orchard fruit. Ooh. Really nice. Malt tones. Some oak on it, too. Oh man. Yeah, this is reminding me of a whiskey I don't have on my shelf right now, but I probably should, which is um, Compass Box Orchard House. Orchard fruits for sure. Possibly even stone fruits, but a waxiness that reminds me of like Tanninic, Daluin, or like Kleinleash, like those sorts of things, which are all things Compass Box loves to use um in their blends usually they use the tanninic or the deluin i think as kind of a substitute for klein leash when they can't get it at the age or the profile they want i am i'm loving this i could smell this for a while this i'm not picking up any grain on that pull up the answer key here just in case I guess I showed you guys the bottom of that glass without showing you the answer key. Hopefully that's on camera there. Yeah, that's that's really enjoyable. Okay. Let's see if the black glass here can be any competition. Oh, whoa. Okay. That is nosing very old me. Is it old? Or is it just the first time I'm coming across grain in a glass this morning? Hmm. Oh, man. That took me aback. Okay, I'm going to show you guys the glass here. Hopefully you can see. I'll pull that Scoring chart down there. I think there's definitely grain on this one. But I'm guessing old grain. Yeah, this is... I'm getting like old books. Like, this will be really embarrassing. This is the six-year-old. <laughs> the six-year-old uh, Thompson Brothers BSW. That'd be super embarrassing. I'm sure someone would enjoy it if that happened, though. This is this is nosing kind of austere at this point. This feels like the fruits in it have gone through quite a change. Like oxi like oxidative aging sort of change. Like this is this is catching me out here. This is more complex than I expected, I think. Okay. 
Oh my word. I'm not sure if this is actually good. <laughs> good watching. Um, that one is taking me aback. I'm going to have to move to the palette here. Uh, Greg, I don't know about you, but I always struggle to catch the emoji in the YouTube system and also to manage the super chats as many windows open until it's over. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's a tough juggling act to keep up with, with chats, to bring everything up, to catch. I mean, even I, what I have struggled with the most this morning, if I'm being completely honest, is trying to move the chats down the page. Um, yeah, I'll have to, I'll get better at it as I do it more and more often. I want to be more regular with live streams, guys. I want to have some guests on. So um, we're working on ways to do that in the future here. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, oh my goodness. 2011, we never forget. Yeah, that is a wound that just simply does not want to heal. Um, let me break out my Sedin's jerseys, my BX jersey, my Luongo jersey, or and go cry in a corner right now. I don't know. It was an amazing run. <laughs> Good thing I got something to drink here. <laughs> yeah, that elusive uh, 81 82 logo, the flying V, man. I love that flying V. The, that jersey was so ugly. It was beautiful. I loved that 82 jersey. Um, I, I'd love to see a reverse retro in blue and green of that uh, 82 flying V. That is really, really cool. Thank you so much, Tyler. Congratulations on the 2K. Hats off to you, my friend. Very appropriate with the hats off. I like it. I like it. Uh, Watchmen. Definitely thinking about Victoria Whiskey Festival. Free accommodation with family if I'm out there. Yeah, that's big. Honestly, accommodation was probably the biggest part of our expense while we were there. So uh, if you got the accommodation already taken care of, man, it's a no brainer. Get out to it. It was incredible. Like the, the, the master classes were, were good. If you do KWM tastings, um, honestly, the KWM tastings might have more rare things sometimes, but, um, the, the actual grand tasting itself was amazing. And the after parties were intense. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. So yeah, uh, I'll leave that at that. Curious about the new tour of egg too, especially yeah, the Sherry cast one that just released, just released this week, I think. Yeah. Hope to see that in Canada soon as well. Sheldon. I pre-ordered the Tour of Vague and we'll be picking it, uh, it up this week. Uh, which one? Uh, both? Did you get both? Also, you have an awesome bottle I keep seeing on your shelf in your Instagram posts. Is that uh, Decadent Drinks Company, the notable Age Statement 30. That is, I've had a sample of that twice. That's a beautiful bottle, my friend. You have a gem on your shelf with that NAS 30. Um, yeah, are you picking up both? Or are you picking up uh, the Batch Strength or the regular Alt Glean? I'm I'm partial to the bash site. I want to see how that fares against an Octomore. Um, I'm guessing it won't come off quite, quite as peaty, but that'd be really interesting. Same happened with Wolf, Wolfburn versus Old Pulteney. Uh, the nor most Northern Mist is gone. Yeah, Northernmost uh, is gone off the label of Old Pulteney. And yeah, great specs they give to Vague. Uh, they should all do that. I agree. It'd be great to have just more disclosure. We all want more disclosure. Just I guess only so much they can give us. But if they're going to tell us what the ppm levels are on the grain they can get the measurement done to uh find out what it is in the liquid i know odd society uh spirits they're making a whiskey they're hoping to make a whiskey that is more peated than octomore um so that's a noble endeavor and they want to use i think local peat for that uh here in british columbia so that'd be really interesting to see if they're able to pull that off and they want to actually get like an in spirit the residual phenol um not the actual in grain to, to beat up uh, on Octomore there. So that'll be cool. All right, the palette on glass blue. Pull this chart up again so you guys can follow along, keep up with what it is I'm drinking. All right. Oh, man. Yeah. Okay, enough of the nose. The nose is really great on this. A lot of ex-bourbon influence here. Yeah, a lot of ex-bourbon. Some coconut. Those orchard fruits come through more on like um, a Granny Smith apple sort of thing. Maybe even the apple pie. There's a bit of cinnamon spice. Um, yeah, dusting of cinnamon. Even, uh, honestly, almost like a flaky crust too. So I'll go full 
there's apple pie going on with this um malt character is great the finish right now really nice um i mean really decently long finish right now honestly so i'm gonna guess this is this is malt again this is all malt that's that's enjoyable that's really that that sticks sticks with you i wouldn't be surprised if this is a little bit higher ebv too because that just the length of finish on this um is doing it for me mm. oh man i have a hunch as to what this is i think this might be um just because it's so similar for me in profile to compass box orchard house I'm going to guess that this is the um, Thompson Brothers SRV5, Station Road VAT5, um, which I only have samples of thanks to Hexagonal Crank. So, Hex, if you watch this, thank you so much for providing the samples of the two Thompson Brothers, the TBBSW 6-year-old and the SRV5 8-year-old. Um, yeah, that, and I mean, <laughs> other samples too, man. You've been super kind and generous with that. And I've been able to... Um, share those people uh those uh whiskeys virtually with 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 people uh thanks to you thank you for that and uh thanks also watchman you know we've uh, swapped some samples in the past too thank you for those i'm still i've still got two of those left to work through and yeah okay so i'm really enjoying this blue let's see if uh if black uh the black glass here can uh give some stiff competition yeah that is that's old that's an old whiskey hmm Okay, gonna put that. Actually, I'll pull that off for a sec. I'll show you the glass. What's on the bottom there? Hopefully, you can see it. I'll pull the chart up so you can tell what it is. I mean, unless I'm really screwing up here, if this really is as old as I'm thinking it is, this would have to be the wild card. This would have to be the St. Thomas blend. I'm really liking the nose. So the nose is really engaging. Definitely more like to use a compass box term, Velicor. I think like old books. I think like old leather bound books, like an old bookshop or library. There's a grain, like slightly grain adhesive note to it, which I'm not super fond of, but that's, I think that's largely been removed by age. Yeah. Very like austere, rich sort of vibes here in the in those. All right, taking a sip. Hmm. Yeah, there's a bit to pick through there. That is. Say that's decently complex. Wow. You know you're enjoying a dram when you start to fall silent while sipping it. I think the, the grain elements are still there. Slight adhesive and some vanilla sugar, but um, which I always associate with grain. I need more experience with grain whiskey, though. I really do. That is... Um, oh, man. That is all on these older notes, richer notes. Um, I'm I'm stuck with like these dusty dusty notes here. It's not a fruity dram, I would say. It's definitely more on the richness, more savory, maybe some nutty and woody tones too. Another sip. Hmm. Definitely on when, oh, there's chocolate too. Definitely chocolate, dark chocolate. Probably more bitter due to the oak influence. Oh, man. Hmm. Hmm, yeah. <laughs> okay, so this might be where the wild card comes into play with an outsized influence because, oh, both of these drams are fantastic. I'm really enjoying both of these. These are great. Excellent, excellent drams for for excellent examples of I'm going to say a blended malt in the blue glass and a blended scotch in the black glass here. 
yeah, there's no losers here. There's only winners. I'm going to ponder my decision on which one's going to win here and uh, check in with the comments and then uh, we'll pick a winner and we'll get to a bit more uh, news. I wish I had a big table as Matt before the camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this uh, this table um, we uh, received uh, as a uh, as a uh, gift uh, from a coworker of mine, uh, Dan, after we lost all our furniture in the fire. So um, we've been blessed by a lot of great people. Um, who helped us out and this table is just perfect for this it's a perfect setup uh, for what we're doing here right now dame judy hench uh mitch i believe it is hey hey welcome here i still love that name one of the best names in whiskey tube dame judy hench all right uh as you should get it matt uh orchard house and god knows what's coming on soon i missed some very important info recently yeah, John uh, John Glazer um, has been uh, has moved on from Compass Box. Uh, James Saxon, I believe, is uh, one of the blenders there. Uh, he has been blending for a long time. Uh, I think he's taking over. I've enjoyed a lot of James Saxon blends as well. But uh, yeah, it's an end of an era with uh, Compass Box with uh, John Glazer moving on. Uh, Greg's Whiskey Guide again. That said, he told me I'll be aware of things coming on personally. So we'll see. I have some guesses. Okay. I don't imagine John's going to be out of the whiskey or blending uh, scene. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all to see him pop up with a new venture. Even possibly, um, I don't know, maybe some bigger, has a sight set on something bigger. Maybe a distillery as well. Who knows? Greg, I don't have this problem that is under 1K. You know, they need to fix that. I thought they were going to fix that with, I think, 500 subscribers uh, now uh, for monetizing for small channels. I thought that was going to happen. Um, they need to support small channels and upstarts a lot more. Um, know that you have my support, Greg, and uh, my uh, sub. I will celebrate along with you whenever you hit 1K, my friend. Um, same goes for you, Tyler. Whenever you hit 1K, uh, we'll definitely be celebrating. Just whiskey, just whiskey. I was watching one of your videos this morning, man. I was watching your old Pulteney uh, 17 uh, versus the 18, the old, the legendary 17-year-old, John. Um, thanks for popping in. Cheers, buddy. And uh, keep up the great work, man. Um, didn't leave a comment, as I mentioned earlier. I was walking when I was listening to that. Um, so, yeah. No, great, great, great video. Really appreciate that comparison. All right, John, whiskey neighbor. Hey, Matt, congrats. Just dropping in somewhere in the middle of Saturday chores. I know that feeling. Love the content you're sharing. So good. Thank you so much, John. John, it was a thrill uh, last year for me to meet you at BC Distilled. Uh, got some photos and just chatted and uh, realized that we uh, had, went to some of the same uh, post-secondary institutions, if you will. Um, that's uh, That was pretty cool. Um, so I really appreciate that. Love your videos, man. Um, always watching and always keeping up with what you're doing. Uh, if you don't know John's channel, Whiskey Neighbor, uh, up in Alberta there. Um, yeah, happy Easter, John. And uh, yeah, I hope you're uh, you're celebrating it with family. Ooh, Dame Judy Hench, the Sherry Tour Vig is incredible. Taste at Southport Wh Whiskey Festival and just purchased a bottle. That's good intel. It's good intel. If I see it coming to uh, my market, I will jump on that bottle. And a little more Torveg talk. Uh, Whiskey of the West Coast. There is a Torveg special release batch strength for France, which is different than the others. Oh, interesting. And, oh, wow. Okay, that's an interesting cast. It looks like Oloroso, Bourbon, uh, PX, Virgin Oak. Same ABV, though. It's 61.1. Okay, that's really interesting. Uh, let's see. Whiskey on the West Coast with the screen shared with the chart. That glass is tiny. My eyesight can't cope. Okay, we'll get to the reveal here uh, on uh, what whiskey it was there. Uh, sorry, that was uh, a bit small there. I, uh, I'll i try to keep the chart down when I'm showing the glass and then bring the chart up. That's the, definitely the best way for me to do that. Okay. All right. This is the hard part. Now I actually have to make a decision. Decisions. Oh, no. One more. Mm. that's amazing if that's what i think it is for the price that's that's a steal i just can't get past this bloody good nose on this mm. 
Mm. This is why I pay attention to what I think here are older blends, older blended scotch. I think in the right hands with the right stock, you can really work wonders. Wow. Okay. It, it's a bad beat situation. Um, I don't think that this blue glass necessarily should be going out right now in this stage of the competition. I think it deserves to move on, but I'm going to have to give it to the black glass here. Um, I think this is the wild card. I think this is the chaos that I wanted in the morning occurring right here. I'm going to consider the blue glass um, in the final round. It's not going to be officially up for winning the competition, but I'm going to keep it in mind because I, it is a bit unfair if it came up against this older expression, I'm guessing right here. So enough guessing about, I'm going to show you what's on the bottom here. Once again, I still don't know. I'll pull up the chart. I'm guessing that this was the SRV5 that, uh, you know, I can't call it Solera system because it's not Sherry, but like Solera-esque VAT system that Thompson Brothers is doing. Lots of time to marry. With that, I am going to go ahead and use the handy dandy reveal board. All right. So we're eliminating blue. We're going to move on black. So we're going to reveal blue here. And the blue glass is E. It's E. Which is Thompson Brothers SRV5. Yeah. No, it deserved a better fate, I think. Um, but we are going to retire that glass for now. We will move on our black glass here. Still don't know what it is. I'll show you guys what that is so you can keep along. And we'll get to some more news. And then uh, we will go ahead and get to our last pair there. So that's what's in the black glass. Pull up the chart. Okay. All right. I love it when everyone's talking together. Greg saying at Whiskey Neighbor, we'll catch up on your 20 whiskey videos <laughs> soon. I'm late on many channels, new videos. Yeah, I'm in the same boat, Greg. It happens to all of us. Um, we all catch up on the back catalog eventually. When I'm doing chores or again, when I'm going for a long walk or hiking, uh, I usually catch up on them. Again, not very conducive to comments, but that's how I keep up with everything. Whiskey Neighbor, I have not had a tour of egg yet uh, either, Greg. Uh, I uh, see you have, but not bought. Uh, cheers, Greg. Yeah. Yeah, we're sipping blind, uh, John. We're sipping blind. Blind blend battle. Um, so those are the six bottles that were in the, the competition here. We've already eliminated that uh, naked malt. And we've now eliminated the Thompson Brothers SRV5, which is uh, too bad. Again, I feel like that's a bad beat. Okay. Yeah, lots of people saying hi. Um, Greg confirming. Yeah, James is indeed taking over the blending team. So James Saxon, again, I've loved a lot of the stuff that he's done. Um, yeah, really great stuff. <laughs> Whiskey neighbors <laughs> saying hi to Tyler. Uh, great to see you here. Matt is killing the content. Great guy. Thanks, John. You're so kind, man. You're so kind. <laughs> Just whiskey. I'm forgiven. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's a relief. Um, yeah. Go ahead and keep it up. You, you you have a really great sense of humor, too, there, John. I appreciate it. Especially that uh, April Fool's Day video from last year with uh, all that Springbank 10. I wonder if you have something in uh, in your, your back pocket for this year. And then Compass Box will indeed open a distillery, but I'm not sure that John will take care of it as he'll go elsewhere. But I suspect a chain, uh, a change of country uh, regulations wise. Okay. Okay. Interesting. I wonder if that will uh, allow um, a bit more freedom for him. Um, I, I'm sure every blender wants more freedom with what they can do. So that, that would be interesting. And more people subscribing, just subbed, lots of content to check out tonight. That Yeah, no, check out John's uh, Just Whiskey's content. Great stuff. And uh, we need, indeed, also some teleport uh, <laughs> teleporters like Star Trek uh, to visit YouTuber friends and subs to go to Victoria F uh, Festival. Yeah, that'd be amazing to have all you guys uh, show up with, for the Victoria Whiskey Festival next year. 
And then uh, before we move on here, happy Easter, Matt, from Whiskey Neighbor. Yep, going to celebrate with all extended family tomorrow. We'll have a great time. Cherish that time, John. That's uh, that's really that's that's special time, special moments. Um, and hopefully, you're raising something uh, something special to to match the occasion for Easter. All right, let's pull this chart down. We'll get to some news. So we've talked about Toraveg. This is also probably going to be old news for some of you, but it also might mean that some of you have actually tried some of these whiskeys because in the last, let's say, three weeks or so, maybe a month, we have seen the, re the release of the Meikle Tor range, Glenallachie's peated whiskeys in Alberta. Now, the full range has now released from some stores. Some stores are holding back the special, a uh, little more limited release, the Turbo, for future release. But the Meikle Tor releases are really interesting because it's the first spirit outside of the um, 50th anniversary releases from Billy Walker last year. It's the first chance we're getting to see Billy Walker's own spirit with the longer fermentation times coming off of the stills at Glenallachie. So this is Glenallachie, but peated. Um, which, does that make it Glenallachie anymore? I'm not sure. Maybe that's why they went with this separate kind of branding with Meikle Tor, which I think is... Oh, what does that mean? Oh, the... Um, Oh, it's big something. Oh, goodness me. Um, anyways, the it's the Peated Glenalki range. There's four expressions that are released. One is the original, uh, which is bourbon, American virgin oak, and rye barrels aged five years. They're all five years old. That one is proof to 50% ABV. I've heard really great things about that one in particular, as well as the turbo. Glenalki Meikle Tor, the sherry one, which is American X bourbon with PX, Pedro Jimenez, and Oloroso sherry second maturation. Proofed a little bit lower at 48% ABV. Five years old. Um, I, Whiskey Wednesday. Whiskey Wednesday. Absolutely loved that one. He basically gave a command for everyone to go out and buy that bottle. Um, so uh, that was interesting. That gave me a little bit of FOMO. I have not taken that instruction yet. But I'm very tempted to. Um, so who knows? Uh, my wallet's already shaking with fear. Third one there is the Glenalki Mikkel Tor, the Chinkapin one. And so uh, is that Quercus Muhlenbergi? I think is the the te technical name instead of like Quercus Alba. I think it's Quercus Muhlenbergi is Chinkapin uh, oak. So it's American X bourbon with Chinkapin virgin oak finish, aged five years, forty eight percent ABV. So really interesting one there too as well to be able to, uh, I know Rasse is uh, using Chinkapin Oak quite a bit. I know Glenalki's used Chinkapin before as well. That's where I was first introduced to it. Um, so it'd be inter interesting to see what this uh, more heavily peated, peated around 35 phenol parts per million PPM, uh, what that does with the uh, Chinkapin Virgin Oak. That'd be interesting. Again, uh, proof down to the same percentage as the Sherry one, the 48 percent abv and finally we have the glenallachie meikle tour the turbo it's three american virgin oak casks and five oloroso hogsheads aged five years 50 percent abv and that one is uh that one's actually a heavier peated than the rest i think that one's closer to 70 phenol parts per million though that's not exact so don't quote me on that but i do believe it is much heavier peated than the other three really interesting releases I would be lying if I didn't have some FOMO over the turbo. I would love to get my hands on that bottle. They all came in at really reasonable prices too. Um, they came in at right around like 80 to $90 in Canada. And I know that they're uh, reasonably priced enough that uh, people like Roy were, were picking up uh, nearly the full range um, in the UK. So yeah, really interesting whiskeys there. I'm excited to see what the longer fermentation times have done with Glenallachy. Um, I think we'll see that more clearly with their unpeated uh, range. But I think it's uh, really interesting to have um, those. I do have samples on the way of all four. Um, I have a small 15 mil half ounce pours of all four of the Meikle Tour range. And I also have, thanks to Hexagonal Crank, thank you once again, I have a sample of that 50th release four-year-old peated that came out um, last, I think last year or 2022. I only got it last year. Um, but I'll be able to possibly compare the four along with that Glen Alki four-year-old. Um, so that, that that's really exciting for me. I'm excited to, to get my hands on those. Um, so eventually I'll get a video up comparing all those whiskeys.
Cool. Checking out the comments before we get to our last pairing here. Oh, Don, Aaron Remnant Ren Renegade, please a review. I missed out on that bottle. I saw it release at Kensington Wine Market. I had an opportunity to snag a bottle. I heard good things. And man, oh man, I, I, I slept on it. I wanted to save some money and it disappeared like vaporware. So yeah, it's, uh, it, uh, I don't think it's available in my market at all anymore. But um, yeah, I'd love to get my hands on it. it it's a really cool concept uh, using all these like leftover cask ends, it sounded like, um, to create a, uh, a bottling. So that, that was really cool. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it was good. I'm sure. I mean, Aaron doesn't miss on much. I do have one Aaron bottling that I'm not a big fan of. And I think I might talk about that in a future video. It's uh, you're taking your life into your own hands, speaking ill about Aaron. And it's not that it, I'm going to speak ill about it, but I don't think it, it just clicked for me as it might have for others. So, yeah, that, that's a little tease. Tyler Seaway heading to the uh, the in-laws for Easter. All the best, everyone on the chat, Matt. Great stream. See you around. Thanks for stopping in, Tyler. Really appreciate it. Happy Easter, man. I hope you're uh, you're enjoying it and I hope you enjoy the Canucks game tomorrow. Uh, and who John. Just whiskey. I will have something special for April Fools. Okay, you're gonna have to top that Spring Bank ten uh, from last year. All right, people chiming in on Meikle Tour. Greg still hasn't tried the Meikle Tour. Sugar Kitty haven't seen the Meikle Tour hit the U.S. yet. Yeah. Okay. So you guys are in the same boat as me. We're we're hearing things, but we haven't actually laid our hands uh, uh, on it yet. It hasn't graced our glass yet. Hopefully uh, soon, because uh, I'd like to get more and more uh, information on how they're doing. Yeah, Whiskey Wednesday's review on that sherry, the sherry one. Um, go check that out on YouTube if you can. It was a resounding yes. It was a full stop. Go and get a bottle. I can't remember if he gave it an 8 or a 9 out of 10, but was in love with it. Lots of wood tech, if you ask me. New and old distillers have to be cautious with that. Nobody talks about it, but for me, all that wood tech is the downside of asking for no color added. Yeah, I was thinking as, we're, as I was reading out, the cast types for those Mikkel Tor, there's a lot of virgin oak, a ton of virgin oak. And you could say that maybe he's trying to pull some of those like wood notes out um, for a young whiskey uh, to make it seem older than it actually is. But you also know there's part of it there that, you know, they want that really dark hue that comes with virgin, virgin oak uh, maturation as well. Uh, and so there's part of me there that's like, huh, that's a little bit... Uh, a little bit uh, cynical, if you ask me. Henry Muhlenberg, a Pennsylvania icon. I'll have to familiarize myself with them. Uh, I'm wondering if the, he's actually the namesake that uh, that the oak type is named after. Wraith, good evening. Good evening, Wraith. Welcome here. Uh, yes, let's see. But yeah, Wood Tech, uh, I, I, do, I do share some of your, some of your um, apprehension with uh, the, those whiskeys there uh, from Glen Alkey and other distilleries that are really relying on, especially virgin oak. Um, it's a slippery slope, if you ask me. Greg, chinkapin, uh, but even more virgin oak and wine casts, if you ask me. Not everyone masters it, especially wine casts. Like, you got to be careful. They can spoil so easy. They can go bitter, acrid, sour. Oh, man, there's just, yeah, it's it's a tough one. Sugar Kitty, some of the old Aaron bottles still sitting on shelves here. I've uh, been buying them up. Yeah, I still see uh, old 10-year-olds and 18-year-olds with the old uh, labels in my market here as well. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Awesome. Uh, so I'm going to show you our last two combatants in these, uh, in these pairings here before we get to the final stage. So I'll show you the bottom of this class. You can see what letter it is. Pull up the chart. You can quickly reference. So this is sherried, my guess. Yeah, it's got some of that raisin, dark fruit, prune to it, chocolate. Dark chocolate, maybe in a bit of milk chocolate too. Like there's a, yeah, but it's very much on the heavier dark fruits, stewed fruits, 
prune, raisin, fortified wine, sherry. Just, I mean, call it what it is. There, there's sherry influence on this whiskey. That is the preeminent dominating note here. Sherry, sherry, sherry. Let's see if I can get something else here. Kind of gently coat the glass. Got Ralphie playing in the back of my head. No shaky, shaky. There's no one quite like Ralphie. He's, he's one in a million. One in a billion, let's say. Yeah. No, there's some... Um, I mean, it's got those herbal notes too, the licorice. Again, I'm really sensitive to that today. Um, I don't always pick that up. Sometimes I get that more in like peated whiskeys that have sherry influence. Um, yeah. When you when you definitely pick different things up when you're drinking earlier in the day and then later in the day too, right? I've noticed that for sure. And to get these live streams to the most people. I try to do them more midday so that uh, people in Europe and the UK can still watch on the eastern, uh, on the east coast of North America. And it's probably the earliest I want to ever drink on the west coast here is starting at 11 a.m. So picking up different things than I'm used to. Touch of leather or tobacco in there too. All in all, really engaging and enjoyable nose. Okay. I will show you guys what's in the clear glass here. All right, and bring up the answer key for you. Oh, okay. So here's here's the problem with my semi blind, my semi blind setup here. Nosing this, I immediately know what this one is, and I'm sorry, guys, it kind of spoils it a little bit. Um, but. When setting this up, I really should have found a way to find another blend that had a, a significant amount of peat in it. Because instantly I am realizing that this is peated. And it's a coastal sort of peat. I'm getting lots of, uh, you know, like salt. I'm getting some salt spray. There's some salinity, uh, some salinity to it. Citrus. Earthy tones too. Dessert tones. Some mineral chalky sort of notes. Yeah. So this is McLean's nose. This is McLean's nose um, by Art American uh, Adelphi uh, Independent Bottlers. This is 70% malt, 30% grain, and um, largely Art American spirit. Um, and then some Glen Scotia and I believe North British grain whiskey. Um, I really love this whiskey. I mean, it was my favorite blend last year. It beat out, I think by one point last year, the Thompson Brothers TB BSW, six-year-old, and the SRV5 uh, for kind of my consideration of um, like low-cost blends. Now, the SRV5 is a blended malt, so that's not fair, but Blended green, if I'm comparing it um, to what with the amount of sherry on this, this might be the Thompson Brothers TBBSW. So we're kind of doing a head to head of the same type here, in my opinion. This is a lovely, engaging nose. We're going to drown them side by side as well. See what, what, what we pick up. Yeah, still on the sherry tones. Bit of powdered sugar, icing sugar. A peat on the clear glass here. <clears throat> Pardon me. Yeah. That is like 85% of the way to our American AD. That's like just like a slightly lesser version of our American. Okay. Taking a sip on the palate of the red glass. Hmm. Green's more present on the palate, for sure. Green's definitely more present on the palate. But I don't think, I don't think 
if I wasn't looking for it, I'm not even sure if I'm going to be able to pick that up. Hmm. So those lovely sherry notes that were on the nose, that chocolate, those prunes, the raisin, the darker tones towards leather and tobacco, those rich sherry notes. Also a really nice, solid baking spice, like cinnamon, nutmeg, outside of my tongue here. Really nice. Really loving that. Second sip was better than the first sip. I'm going to say that right now. First sip caught me out a little bit. Um, Yeah. Yeah, that's that's engaging. I mean, again, for the price on on these whiskeys, five of these are all under. They're all under 40 pounds for sure. Uh, I think most are significantly under that. I know the, the naked malt should be significantly under that. Uh, I believe the rest are in that range about 35 pounds. Yeah, this is great. Mm. This might be again, a battle of like preferred profiles here that that, that might be what's going on because this is giving me what I would like from a nice sherried dram. And in that case, a nice sherried blend. Blended scotch is my guess. I think they, if that if that's the TV BSW six-year-old, I think they kind of nailed their whole goal there of a kind of like old school style blended scotch from what I've, you know, remember from the few old school blended scotches I've had. And from what I've read, I would say that kind of nails it. That nails that profile to me. Yeah, that's super interesting. Okay, we're going to get to the palette on the other one here. I'm going to pull up some comments as we do that. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Dame Judy Hench. I hate to be that guy. When I'm at a whiskey festival, I say, what have you got in bourbon that hasn't been messed about with? Yeah, I mean, I get that. I get that a bit. Um Honestly, like I try bourbon at whiskey festivals as much as I can because I don't buy much bourbon. And if there's a bourbon that's really going to like impress me, um, I'm all ears. Um, but yeah, you, you don't want stuff that's been messed about with too much. Um, you want to know what you're drinking. You want it to be uh, just good, good as it is. Muhlenberg is the Lutheran minister and also botanist that the oak is named after. You learn something new every day. Awesome. So, I mean, that makes sense uh, that a botanist would be uh, would be uh, inspiring the name of the oak. So, Quercus Muhlenbergi gets his name from the Lutheran minister Muhlenberg, who was also a botanist. Very cool. Thanks for that, Sugar Kitty. That would be good trivia. If uh, if Roy's doing a quiz, that'd be a great um, trivia question. You should submit that to him. Uh, Glenfiddich also fell into the trap and trend, revising almost its all its core range with the addition of virgin oak. Yeah, there's some times when I enjoy it. Um, one of those times is not with Octomore. Um, virgin oak and Octomore, the point four was probably my least favorite of the Octomore expressions that I've had. Um, yeah, not not quite my thing, not quite my thing at all. Um, uh, further on that point from Greg Glenfiddich 18, for instance, I used to like uh, a lot despite. Uh, too low ABV. Still got some. Uh, has now also virgin oak and tripled price. So it's not. It's a big no from me. I will not replace a lot of the of uh, of single malt. Indeed, that's a that's a shame uh, to to lose an expression that you love because they've they've changed it so greatly. Sugar kitty. It's easy when you're <laughs> when you as a Pennsylvania German. Yeah, I mean, uh, that would make sense. Uh, if you're from Pennsylvania, Lutheran minister, that that follows. Uh, you'd have that information. Andrew Butler, I once organized the first ever simultaneous transatlantic Sherlock Holmes toast. It was evening in London and Belfast, but lunchtime in California. Yeah, no, exactly. That's the perfect time to do it when, uh, when it's about lunchtime and on, uh, on the West Coast. I think then everyone can uh, jump in and appreciate it. And not be at a horrendous hour. I as I there was a um, Guinness World Records attempt by the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society this past year um, during salmon season, uh, salmon fishing season, 
And they were sending out free kits uh, to join this uh, Guinness World Record uh, largest simultaneous whiskey tasting uh, for free if you committed to being able to join because it was salmon fishing season. I I was like, I, I can't. I got to be on the river fishing instead of drinking whiskey at five in the morning. Um, so, yeah, no, um, doesn't always work for everybody. Oh, we got someone chiming in with uh, some uh, opinions on the Mikkel Tour. Pete, welcome here, Pete. Thank you for joining. Love the Mikkel Tour range. Okay. And the price is right. No, yeah, the prices, uh, they seem right up my alley. That's for sure. I was sure you'll pick the AD in the McLean's nose, Matt. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just so prominent. Um, and with it being 70% malt, as you note, And it's just a profile that I just am loving. I'm just loving. Yeah. No, that that's right up my street. Okay. As I'm nosing this, we'll pull up, pull up some more news. Then I'll give me some time to think and pick a winner here. So we're going to talk a bit about another release in Alberta. Sorry if it's a little too Canadian-centric with this release, but I find it interesting because of how the price compares to something that's um, also happening in my market. It might be happening in your market too. Oh, man. McLean's nose is just... its It's... Honestly, I'd take that whiskey to the river for salmon fishing any day of the week. That, the, the, the nice lick of smoke, ashy smoke, Coastal elements, the citrus, the mineralic uh, profile, yeah, that that that's a that's a scrumptious whiskey. So back onto the news: Gordon McPhail, Bunahav in 1998, Canada exclusive cask, 24 year old from Refill American Oak. I'm gonna guess uh, Refill American Oak Hogshead. I'm gonna guess that was ex bourbon. ABV is 48.3 percent, kind of low if you ask me for a Gordon McPhail 24 year old. Um, only 114 bottles, so I'm guessing that might have been a leaky cask or maybe a porous one. $365 Canadian. Um, not a bad price at all, uh, in my opinion. Tasting notes from the label here. Pineapple and mango aromas infused with crystallized violets and butterscotch. Smooth lemon and lime give way to pomegranate and creamy pear. A medium-bodied finish with citrus and mature oak. That sounds bloody amazing. That sounds flipping incredible to me um and to have a great a, a expression of bunahaven not from sherry really uh, makes me interested it is higher than previous ones it's not high when you consider the price for mid 20 year old single malt in my market these days i'd say i see peter here you're you're chiming in you say the price on that g uh gordon mcphail 24 year seems too high I get that. It, it it really is borderline. I think we're paying an Isla tax on on this whiskey a bit, but I just it doesn't seem out of line for me. And I'm gonna pull up something here, um, on this, and this is kind of the the, the broader picture on this particular uh, note when we're talking about prices. Because again, that that description there sounds bloody brilliant to me. Okay. Bunahaven, 25-year-old, the official bottling, just returned to Alberta. The last time I was looking at a bottle and did not purchase, it was at lowest $340 Canadian. At some of the other stores, ran closer to $400 Canadian. However, Bunahaven, 25-year-old, when it's re-released in Alberta this week, Released at $799 Canadian, $800. That's more than a doubling of the price. That is more than $400 higher than a price I could have purchased it for last year. $460 more Canadian. That is a price increase. I, I know that uh, there have been price increases on the 25-year-old. I get it. But a jump that high is beyond reproach for me. I am not going anywhere near this bottle, anywhere near this whiskey for $800. I get it. 
They want to catch up with other companies, I'm guessing. Uh, I'm not sure if this is being directed by the distillery, if this is the importer, exporter. I'm not sure who is behind this particular price increase. But looking at this price increase, they're trying to catch up, it seems, with Highland Park, who's selling uh, the 25-year-old in BC here anyways for about uh, $1,400 Canadian. The Bowmore 25, which is $1,500 to $1,600 Canadian. Um, I mean, what 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 is McAllen, twenty five year old these days? I don't even know because I don't even consider them. Uh, that that's a bottle that doesn't even exist to me at this point. Uh, the prices are so ridiculous. Sadly for me, this this price increased eight hundred dollars puts Bunahav and twenty five year old in the same camp. That's too much money. And so if we go back and reconsider this independent bottle from Gordon McPhail, released the same week in Alberta as we got the return of the twenty five year old. $365 Canadian versus 800 The Isla tax is real, but um, this this is ridiculous. This uh, Yeah, this, this kind of caught me out. I, I am not uh, impressed at all with that price. Um, yeah, I don't know. Again, I don't want to blame the distillery. I don't want to blame the importer, ex, uh, <clears throat> the importer, but someone's behind it. And, and market dynamics, perhaps, are, are behind it. But that rules me out. That I'm not spending that money on a bottle. I'm just not. So I'm going to get into the chat here and see what you guys are saying about that price. Price is always, uh, always a topic that gets a lot of uh, chatter from us whiskey folk. We like to bother about, about prices quite a bit. Uh, but for good reason. That directly impacts what we're able to enjoy. Um, so I do not at all take qualms with talking about price. So when we started this conversation about the Bunhavens, these two, Peter was talking about the 24-year-old uh, price seems too high. Pete said that could be great, but an ex-bourbon is really nice. Yeah, and see, I don't have a really great uh, example of ex-Bunhaven unpeated in my collection. I have some Stoisha, um, some Moin. Uh, no, I guess it's, it's Stoisha if it's independent bottling from Cadenheads. Um, but... Yeah, uh, I'd love to have that in my collection. Peter White, take away the Buna name and it drops by $150. That's the Isla tax. It, 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 I'm not going to say you're wrong with that, Peter. I'm not going to say at all. Uh, Greg, awesome notes for this, but expensive. But now that's alas, I'm not surprised. ABV indicates for me Dunnage Warehouse maturation. That's all. Got a very low ABV Adelphi Buna oven. Yeah, and I'd... I'd guess that too like if it wasn't gordon mcphail i wouldn't be caught out by it quite as much just because i know gordon mcphail oftentimes uses thicker staves to try and slow down that loss in abv which is how they get these like 80 year old glenn Livets and whatnot with these thicker staves but i do also think that more often than not the thicker staved casts that they use oftentimes are their sherry casks so maybe maybe that's why this is kind of more on trend with other independent bottlers and the reduction in abv um, so yeah, good call on that, Greg. Sugar Kitty Distillery Buna 24 is $700. So an IB at 375 is not out of line at all. That's kind of where I'm coming in on this Sugar Kitty uh, for me. Um, Greg, uh, that's where the dis undisclosed bottles shine and make your wallet happy. Yeah, the the, the ones that don't have the 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 right to use the distillery name often come in so much cheaper and uh, still with a lot of quality pete it's all that wood that they have to import and shore up their biomass greg bunahaven and legend wise i'll go uh, way more towards indies than ob's on my side i have only great in uh, independent bottles from those two yeah i love i love buna and legend peter white is calling out probably the best value in the Canadian market for uh, mid twenties whiskey, and that was, I believe, Rob Whiskey in the Sixes Whiskey of the Year. The Anok, twenty four year old, two hundred thirty dollars Canadian. Sometimes you can even get it on sale off of that too if you catch a store with a with a discount. It's an incredible whiskey. I got a sample of it on the shelf here. I've enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I mean, for that price, incredible value, incredible deal. I'm not sure you're beating that for a mid twenties single malt in Canada right now. Donner Pass chiming in here. Yeah, so often the distillery name sets the price. Kleinleach 16, 210 versus Glen Grant 22, 170, for instance. 
with two uh, Gordon McPhail castoring bottles sold recently near you. Uh, I'm wondering if those are KNL wines, perhaps. Uh, KNL seems to get a lot of Gordon McPhail stuff. First edition single cast Ben Nevis, 1997. Um, I have that one, Peter. It was 230 Canadian. Yeah. And it's gone now, sadly, but I have that on my shelf. That, that's a great bottle. Yeah. Um, it, it's really sad to see like the prices go on the way they are. We're almost caught up on comments here, but uh, maybe we see, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, often see distel distilleries. Uh, bottlings go very high here in France with Legic 18 at 150 to 180. It's interesting. Their lower core range expressions, like the 12, Legic 10, the uh, the Deanston's uh, Virgin Oak, all super reasonable price. Some of the best values in my market, but the higher aged whiskeys all seem to be very high priced compared to their competitors. So yeah, it, it's kind of give and take, I suppose, because Electric 10 is one of the best like peated age stated whiskeys in my market. You can get at a really good price, like about $70 less on sale in Alberta. Um, we don't get the 18, so I can't give you a comparable for the price there. Uh, but yeah, really interesting. Pete, they have the distillery exclusive Moyne and ex-cognac, which is ex outstanding, but very expensive. I would love to get my hands on some more Moyne. Definitely. We have to pay 230 US dollars for it. Uh, so given the exchange rate, that's a bargain for the Anoc 24. I'm guessing you're talking about. And yeah, Anoc 24. Yeah, yeah. I wish I had a reserve bottle, uh, but prices are increasing here too. And we all know it'll change after certain imminent rebranding. I have heard word about the, uh, the rebranding coming up for Anoc. So if I want a bottle, I should definitely be picking one up. And a little bit on uh, Brooklady are charging 150 pounds for an 18-year-old now. Yeah, everything's going up, which is interesting timing because the last bit of news we'll get to is in regards to pricing trends. Still nosing this McLean's nose. This is bloody brilliant stuff for the price. It, I got this bottle under $50 Canadian. Uh, it retails for about 52 to 55 Canadian in Alberta. Got this for about $42. Um, yeah, it's a steal. Mm. Still, yeah, I mean, I'm so certain that that's McLean's nose, but it it's going to be McLean's nose. Um, if you watch my review of McLean's nose, though, <clears throat> I don't think I'll be replacing the bottle just because it's about 85% of the way to Art American AD, and you can get bottles of the Arden American 80 in Alberta for on sale about $60, uh, $65 with more and more batches coming out with more and more um, age to them. I'm hoping they're going to keep getting better and better. I'll probably just keep exploring the Arden American AD range than the McLean's nose, but this is a great, great whiskey to have about uh, and a great example of a young blended scotch doing awesome things. Like no one's going to drink that and go, yeah, too young. At least I don't think so. Checking in with this red glass here again. Hmm. Much darker, richer notes. Um, just a different profile altogether. Much sweeter. Again, that kind of sticky sherry sort of thing. Raisin, broom, chocolate, some leather. All very good. Um... It really just comes down to personal preference. These these two whiskeys really they should be a basically a statistical tie, pricing about the same. Um, ABV I believe they're both forty six percent ABV or in and around. Let's say I'm not going to uh, break my back uh, my hump here to get the exact stats, but they are it's a statistical tie more or less for these. But for me, my personal preference in style is the McLean's nose. And some of you probably predicted that. I'm guessing, Greg, you might have predicted that I'd go with the McLean's nose, the white glass or clear glass here, over the red glass. That's not to be smirch. Uh, what I'm guessing is the Thompson Brothers BSW in this glass. Um, it's super enjoyable as well. But if I'm going to eliminate one, it's going to be the red glass here. So let's do the proper reveal. I have my assumptions, but I'll show you what's on the bottom of that glass. And revealing, that's what the chart says. Let's check this board, handy dandy reveal board. 
So red glass is B. You can see that. All right. And checking in. It is the Thompson Brothers BSW six year old. Really like a great whiskey. Like I am really enjoying it. I do wish Thompson Brothers had distribution in Canada so I could get a bottle. Uh, but we're going to retire this glass. I might try to do a quick lightning round uh, ranking all six from uh, first to sixth uh, at the end here. But we're going to move on this clear glass here that I'm guessing is Arden American. So we're going to put all these glasses on the same side, get this table set up. We'll talk about a little more pricing news, price trends, and we'll get to our battle royale, uh, our uh, determining of a winner with this blind blend battle. Okay, seeing there was more pricing talk in the chat as we were doing that there. Legic 10, all sold out across the US, uh, would be a great bargain, but no availability. Um, that's too bad to hear. Uh, I'm hoping it's coming back to you soon. We had uh, Bunahaven 12 disappear for a number of months in what seemed every market in Canada, but it is back on shelves now. So hopefully you get a, um, a backup in stock shortly. The worst is what Glenn Goyne and Tamdu did last year here, Greg is saying. Crazy prices, over 150 160 for their 15-year-old. Uh, about some <laughs> uh, shit and uh, two about chill filtering makes no difference told on the show by a head uh, BA. Yeah. Okay. You know, right now I have a couple of Tam dudes on the shelf. I don't have anything Glenn going on my shelf because I do struggle to find uh, a really compelling offering in my market. I have to take another look at the back strength, see how that turns out. I did have a single cask, that was uh, under the table pour from the Victoria Whiskey Festival, which absolutely blew my mind. So I know Glen Going can be great whiskey, uh, but I've heard a lot of problems with pricing. I see a lot of problems with pricing in my market and with presentation. Um, so I'm not rushing to buy Glen Going stuff in my market right now. Another great price for an Auk 18, 134 at BSW. Yeah, I know that store well. They do have some great prices on stuff. It is probably the time to scoop up the Anok. As uh, Greg pointed out, the rebranding is nigh. I like using weird words, guys. Uh, nigh. I don't know many people that use nigh in their everyday uh, talk. But Sugar Kitty, seeing Talisker go down, HP bottlings going down, and recently Old Pultney positively, uh, the bottom falling out of the price. Yeah. So that's actually a great launching point into what we're going to talk about with pricing trends uh here as well because we saw obviously the price increase just this week of about 460 dollars on that bunahaven 25 year old i received an email in my inbox this week though from smws canada that seems to be a sign of the times and good news for consumers though not necessarily good news for those in the whiskey industry they were happy to announce that prices will be dropping on SMWS bottles in the coming months. So they, they have to order their outturns quite a ways in the future with the SMWS here in Canada. It takes months uh, to actually arrive here. Um, so they have to buy in advance at prices. But it sounds like uh, from reading the email, uh, they were wanting to make sure that bottles go to happy homes instead of sitting on shelves. And there seems to be a lot of SMWS bottles sitting on shelves right now. They're sitting on shelves at Legacy Liquor at the Strath in Victoria sitting on shelves it seems at Kensington Wine Market and at Keg and Court in Alberta. I have been looking at the prices of these bottles. I take uh, part in a lot of SMWS virtual tastings. I have three SMWS bottles uh, that I have purchased since I joined in July. But for a subscription, a membership that I pay for um, to, to have the opportunity to buy these bottles, the fact that I've only bought three um, it feels low and it's low because the prices, uh, the price on like an 11 year old Highland Park is going to be over $200, um, well over $200. I think now I think the last one was closer to 230 or 240. Um, it's good news for uh, me as a consumer and you guys as, as, as whiskey lovers, that prices are coming down, but I do worry that we're seeing the price retracing and, and the, the glass lock, the whiskey lock that, Roy Aquavite has been talking about so much. We are seeing, um, you know, sales um, kind of 
stagnating. There's more things sitting on shelves. There's more things sitting in warehouses. There's more backlog. I think we are seeing um, a reversal in the trends. And which really seems to show the cognitive dissonance of a $460 price increase on Bunnhaven 25, while the same week the SMWS Canada announcing that prices are coming down, basically because bottles aren't moving. And I mean, inflation's high, living expenses are high, everyone's hurting for costs and everyday items. And whiskey is no different. Whiskey is the luxury and all that, the thing that we don't need to get by. And so it would be the first thing cut out of someone's budget, I would imagine. So yeah, a sign of the times, I think we're hearing anecdotally a lot of different uh, takes on how prices are coming down. And so Sugar Kitty, that was a great way to jump into that there. Uh, noting that in your area, Talisker, Highland Park, and Old Pulteney uh, prices are going down. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I I'm just kind of surprised that we're still seeing um, we're still we're still seeing price increases. And maybe that's because things are so many months behind in getting here. Maybe they meant for that price increase to happen in December or November, but it's still it's hitting now, and it is just not reconcilable. I don't I don't think there is an excuse for a more than doubling and more than $400 price increase on a bottle. Okay. <laughs> Andrew Butler. Fredo. You broke my heart, Fredo. Godfather reference. Got to watch that movie again. Saw log Pete saying he saw log of 16 at 60 pounds in the supermarket last week. Yeah. Yeah. And the question is, I mean, that sounds like a good price to me when I have Lagavulin 16 at $165 Canadian uh, in BC. That sounds like a great price. And would I buy it? I don't know. I don't know if I want to reward Diageo pumping the price up and then dropping it. Um, in all seriousness, if I saw it for that price, I probably would buy it. Um, I probably shouldn't stand on a soapbox and say, no, absolutely not. I mean, it's a good whiskey. Lagavulin 16, we all want to see it done a bit better, a bit higher proof. Uh, probably uh, announce some non-chill filtering, leave it natural color, all that. It's still a good whiskey. I mean, I'd, I'd drink it for sure. Pricing is variable. Uh, I now expect 90 pounds for a 15-year-old and 150 for an 18-year-old. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think that's ridiculous. I'm just not sure if the market can bear it right now, at least in, in, in Europe and in North America. And Greg, I'm not dissing those distilleries. They are great, but the owner's policy, uh, mind you, yeah. No, for sure. I mean, there's lots of great people that work and then there's lots of great whiskey that's made at like Glen Goyne and Tamdu. Peter White, I have some older Glen Goyne bottlings that were reasonable when I bought them, but none over the last few years. Yeah, I'm kind of in the same. Um, and yeah, nigh imminent happening soon. Yeah, you got it. You got it. Um, yeah, a few more comments to catch up on here. When it means near, it's spelt nigh. That is the correct spelling, N-I-G-H. You've got it there, uh, Andrew Butler. Yeah. And then, uh, all right, we got a take on the SMWS from both Pete and, Gre uh, and Greg. Let's see here. Not renewing uh, SMWS this year, Pete says. The bars are shite now. Yeah. Never have anything, and the prices are high. It used to be a bastion of value where you could afford a good Dalmore, etc. But those days are over. That's a scathing review. I, I did enjoy my time at the SMWS vaults in Leith, um, Pete, but I, I can understand. Uh, I mean, while I was looking for particular bottles there, I didn't find all um, my first, say, 10 choices there. Um, what I did have there was lovely, and I did kind of search out more value picks on the menu um but it, it was a bit harder to find for sure and greg yeah but in france matt i'm no longer an smws member prices are still high smws wise plus they did propose uh nothing over 10 year uh, 10 year old recently poor local allocation so we'll not jump in yeah i am questioning whether i will renew myself i don't have to make that decision till the summer um but i i they say the price changes will hit right around the time when I'm uh, my membership is out. So yeah, I'm I'm on the fence about rejoining SMWS this year. 
Uh, Rob and Kelly Carpenter, uh, the, the people who own and uh, import SMWS Canada, they, uh, they do a great job here. Uh, and it's no slight against them. Uh, it's not a reflection on them and the job they're doing. But uh, yeah, I'm not certain where I'm going to land with that in the end. All right, let's get to the final round here. So we're going to start, we're going to go green. Uh, we're going to go black and then we're going to go clear glasses here. Clear glass is the one with Pete. So that does make sense to me. We, I will go ahead and refresh you guys on what's in each of these glasses. So I'll show you here. Green glass is that. You can check here what that one was. I remember really liking that one. Okay, pulling that off. Black glass right there. Pull up the chart for you one more time. And then finally, the clear glass. And I think we're on the same page from what I found in that glass and thinking that might be um, this uh, D, McLean's nose, but we'll see. We'll see. Okay. All right. Green glass. Yeah, again, the nose is actually profiling a bit heavier, like almost like they might have included some like Mortlock or something like Craig Alecky, something along those lines in it. Honestly, we were mentioning Glen Goyne. I, I suppose it could be Glen Goyne in it as well. And I do believe that this was bottled by the uh, ownership group behind Glen Goyne. If this is what I'm thinking it is. Yeah, we'll see. That black glass nosed very old. The clear glass nosed with some peat. So I'm going to guess this is the Dumbarton Rock. But that, that more hefty note to it there, really engaging. You can pick up both experiment and sherry influences. So that once again leads me to believe that this might be the Dumbarton there from the Dram Moore group. Take a sip. Yeah, mm, good heft on the palate. Definitely a blended malt. Picked up on orchard fruits earlier on in it. Again, more along the apples and pears, maybe a bit of melon as well. There's some spice in there, some baking spice now. It's profiling us. I'm enjoying that. Definitely malt backbone in there. A bit of a, I'd say like almost profiling towards like toasted oak, some caramel, toffee, butterscotch yeah it's engaging and again for a uh, whiskey at this price around 35 to 40 pounds i believe maybe might, might even be as low as 32 i should have double checked the prices beforehand but it's an engaging whiskey hmm. yeah i'm enjoying that I do wonder how this would have fared if it went up against the Thompson Brothers SRV5 or the Thompson Brothers BSW uh, six-year-old. It's engaging. I'll, I'll, I'll give it that. It's enjoyable. I can't, it feels like there's no real losers in this lineup. Um, and I mean, we're not trying to buy bottles that we don't enjoy, obviously enough. We, we all do our research. We all studiously look things up and try to find the best bottles we can so it makes sense that it's not going to be um disappointing okay on to the black glass here yeah you cannot get around the age on this whiskey old varnished wood like old varnished lacquered wood oh man church pews like it's easter it's easter weekend here this is like walking into an old church, old dusty books, all leather bound because that's the cliche in whiskey. Why not? Oh man. So rich. 
lots of oak on this. Again, kind of leads me to believe that there might have been a, a whiskey that slipped under proof with older age on it. They had to blend up to save it. That whiskey could have been older than the 32. I'm not sure if the 32-year-old might have been the younger whiskey in this. Maybe they're the same age, but it is all of 32 years. Now I'm calling my shots. I'm feeling confident after things went so well at the beginning there. Yeah. I was so nervous at the beginning, though, so can't say I was confident all the way along. Yeah, this is this is a beautiful nose. I'm going to take a sip now. Hmm. Strong, firm oak. Definitely lots of toasted oak spices. Rich, richer uh, oak notes too, more along those again, like varnished wood, lacquer. The dustiness, the malt is there. There's some sweet notes, uh, sweet dessert notes going more along the lines of the grain. So um, maybe like, um, oh gosh, maybe some flaky croissants with like powdered sugar, maybe like um, pistachio or almond croissants that you get at a nice bakery. Definitely a bit of nuttiness to it, too. I think that's why I'm going along the lines of the pistachio or almond. Yeah, all very much along those richer tones, spices in there. This is a this is really nice whiskey. And Watchmen, I see you're still here. Um, this is something I definitely picked up at a previous Kensington Wine Market sale. Yeah. It was actually a really reasonable price for a 32-year-old blended scotch. And... If this is the St. Thomas blend from Boutique, um, <coughs> there is a, actually a really good uh, review of it on Dramface, uh, written by Brody Balfour. Um, so check that out if you're interested in more information about the St. Thomas blend from that Boutique Whiskey Company. Hmm. Yeah, I could drink that all day. That's lovely. That's lovely stuff. Catching up a little bit here. Um, you should see it here in Alberta, $185 for the Lagavulin 16, $100 too high. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. It was only in around the $100 mark. Uh, BC, we've always had Lagavulin 16 priced extremely high. So $165 plus 15% tax. Still too much. I'll never buy it at that price. Lag 16 is available $80 US here. Uh, only a few up the it, with the temporary tariff. I remember that tariff and it dropped uh, when the, it went away. That's good news. Glad you guys have good access to Lago 16. I think you guys have a better price on Talisker 10 too. I might just be, be me. I feel like in Canada, we're absolutely getting ripped off and screwed by Diageo. Um, the prices on the Diageo releases are outside of maybe Klein Leash 14 are kind of ridiculous. Yeah, don't like that at all. A whiskey on the West Coast from Greg. This has a lot to do with local management allocation, mind you. Uh, so don't take my opinion for granted or valid uh, for your market wise. Yeah, I think that was in, in regards probably to the SMWS chatter. Um, yeah, every, I mean, that's the thing about local branches. Like they're only as good as the people who are heading up your local branch and they are they can only do as much as their um, head branch uh, allows them to, right? So we all know everyone answers to somebody and uh, not everyone's doing exactly everything the way they want to. <clears throat> so. Yeah, no, definitely some grace there. Was that Springbank last week? Pete says cage bottles are up to 80 pounds now. I mean, I'm still buying them. <laughs> There's Springbank cage bottles. I've got uh, I've got two and I would do a lot to get more. Anyway, I can complain about the prices, but I'm going to pay them. Yeah, exactly. I know you're going to pay them. Absolutely you are. And Peter, Peter White, you're not going to get much sympathy here when you have access to Springbank Cage bottles, yeah, no. I feel like uh, pointing out the the new price on Springbank cage bottles is like a humble brag, but no, I'd, I'd probably do it too. <clears throat> Whiskey on the West Coast. I wonder if you had to, would you put a blend like Artist Blend from Compass Box within this lineup? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I would. I don't have a bottle of that right now. There is a Kensington Wine Market um, specific Glasgow blend or artist blend that was released last uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, so that would be interesting to do too. 
but I, I do have time for both the the artist and the Glasgow blend. I remember enjoying the Glasgow blend a bit more, but pardon me. <coughs> Drink some water here. Pete asking, did you get a uh, Hirak, Embra, or a rival in Canada? Five-year-old and three-year-old for 13 pounds more than Springbank 10. We did get the Hirak, uh, and we also got the arrival in Canada. Um, arrival actually came in at a pretty decent price. Um, I believe the arrival came in around after, I mean, on sale came in around 75, 80 bucks. And the Hirak was uh, well under a hundred dollars too on sale. I think it was $90. So really reasonable prices. Um, in my opinion, when you have the uh, costs to actually start a distillery, um, I talked about SMWS Canada there. Um, Hollywood, uh, the people behind the arrival, uh, actually their owners, part one of their owners anyways, is Rob and Kelly Carpenter, the same people who own the Canadian branch of SMWS. So some uh, synchronicity there. But point taken, $13 more than Springbank 10. Yeah, I mean, it's not cheap to make uh, a new distillery, to build a new distillery and make new whiskey. Spring make cage bottles. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, you're you're taking some strays there, there Pete, uh, in the in the chat. All right, uh, and they also have. I did see this for Kilcarren's 20th anniversary. They have Kilcarren uh, cage bottles, uh, which is is cool. Yeah, they. I think they released a few different cast types too, uh, but ten pounds more than my last one. Uh, my uh, than last year's. Interesting. Yeah. And then, uh, Greg, underproof wise, it was a blast for me to try once in Cognac Region Warehouse, a 1933 Cognac from the cask, even at 37 or so ABV. I mean, yeah, obviously. I mean, there just because it slips under 40 doesn't mean it's bad. Um, it, I mean, it could be quite incredible uh, whiskey. I mean, it it hasn't been watered down. It hasn't been tampered with. It's naturally gotten down to that point. I don't see a problem in bottling it. I understand below 40, you can't call it um, what it is. Um, but I, I think there's still, uh, I mean, boutique, that boutique whiskey company um, bottled, I think it was closer to like 35%, a 52-year-old malt spirit. They had to call it malt spirit because you can't call it whiskey. And I think they were selling it for like 180 bucks a bottle for a 52-year-old. I mean... I was tempted to take a chance on it. I didn't, but I was tempted for sure. Pete feels like Compass Box is in its own category. Yeah, I could make an entire Compass Box lineup here um, and be very, very happy with that. Um, yeah. All right. Getting back on track here. Enjoyed the first two. Got a little stalled. Moving on to the clear glass. Can show you once again since it's been a little bit what that is there got a lovely peat note on it coastal salinity like lemon citrus on the nose yeah really nice really clean crisp i like drifting smoke i love this profile it's really enjoyable i think a lot of people have also really connected with this profile too I think the big debate is just McLean's nose or TBBSW for a lot of people. Hmm. Yeah. The thing I'll say is it's not the most complex palette. Um, you're not going to be searching for what you're tasting in there for hours on end. It's just instantly appreciable and um, enjoyable. I mean, it, it, it is what it is, um, and I enjoy it quite a bit. That profile is right up my alley. Oh, man. Yeah. I mean, talking about cage bottles at 80 pounds, I've seen cage bottles being sold in my, on secondary in my market for in around $500, and the hand fills from the demi johns which are really reasonably priced i've seen those for 350 and 375 dollars on secondary recently um so i mean 80 pounds for a, a cage bottle i don't think they're taking advantage with that price mm, man oh man okay and 
exactly what we're going to see, I think, with these new release, uh, these new distilleries, Pete. Good call. Second match of Hirak just released. Plenty available this time. There is so much, um, you know, talk uh, about these uh, the releases when they're their first release. And whether you can sustain that momentum with your subsequent releases. Arden American's been able to sustain it, it seems. I mean, you now have it available on shelves. You now can pick it up. I feel like they've been able to sustain it. Whereas I'm not sure a lot of these other new distilleries will. And when it comes to a downturn in sales for classic uh, single malt companies like Highland Park, like um, Old Pulteney, some of the ones that Sugar Kitty mentioned, uh, Talisker, if, if sales are down for them, sales are down for these new companies most likely too. Um, and so it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see how they respond to tougher sales outlooks than the rosy numbers that they got with first releases, inaugural releases, uh, all the clamor to scoop up the first release. I mean, the Hirak, they had so many different batches. Was there really an inaugural release? I think collectors uh, kind of got caught out by that, which I don't mind. I mean, eh, drink your whiskey. Um, don't just buy it for, for flipping and collecting. But I mean, to each his own. I guess if they enjoy that, they enjoy that, right? Uh, one more from Pete here. I'm in London, but I spend a lot of time in Scotland. My son works for a large whiskey distilling company. Very, very good contact to have, uh, having your son in the whiskey industry. That's awesome. I'm sure uh, I'm sure you get hooked up every once in a while with some uh, interesting whiskeys. Grace Whiskey Guy, do you know uh, how much malt versus grain goes into those Thompson blends? Sorry, you might have said, but I forgot. Um, so the... <clears throat> The uh, SRV5 blended malt, of course, would be all malt, and that is the, in the Solera system, uh, doing the kind of two-thirds for bottling, one-third left behind as a starter for the next batch. Sorry, my voice is going. They, they haven't said the ratio for um, malt and grain in the TBBSW six-year-old. Um, there's rumors galore, and... Uh, I've heard the rumors repeated over and over again. And so I'll tell you what the rumors are, but take them with the, the smallest grain of salt. Um, the rumors were that it was a small proportion of grain whiskey that was accidentally blended in to uh, a vatting of McAllen 12 year old. So evidently um, most of it is supposedly malt uh, from McAllen. Um, and then uh, the rest of it being grain, six year old, grain um but that's a rumor i can't confirm anything i mean thompson brothers doesn't even export to my market so i i have no insider information on that but that's the rumor nothing released as far as i understand uh let's see here art american pricing compared to the new uh batch uh they played it perfectly yeah Ex exactly i mean art american the, the greatest thing that art american did for themselves to really stand out was they have committed to kind of keeping their prices like all kind of in line with what they were when they released. They didn't have, you know, a bumped up price for their inaugural release. They didn't say we're going to charge double what we're normally going to charge for this inaugural. And they also, I think they came out and committed basically to keeping their core range released, the AD, the same price, uh, you know, with small increases for inflation. Um, throughout i mean i feel like they're treating whiskey customers the right way they're being above board with everything i mean and the prices on the the ad sherry release the price on um the the ad release they're, they're all very reasonable i'm really appreciating our american i think they yeah they've played it perfectly bang on <clears throat> ah thank you so much for being a patreon there smear gel i really appreciate it we just added your name to the patreon slip uh, today um so that is appearing at the end of this stream actually this is probably a good time to to pull it up and, and thank patreon subscribers i gotta send you a message on patreon here in regards to calling your shot for a review to make sure it's that glenallicky that you want uh, the glenallicky single cast that you want me to review for you um uh, in a in a special call your shot uh review we're talking about patreons thank you so much to my patreons i'm going to add this right here uh, Samir Jell, we put it under uh, the NTLDR name. If you want that as a different name, let us know. We'll put it under your YouTube name here, Samir Jell, or, or the one that was um, that you subscribed under on, on Patreon. But you are in the Mountaineer tier there, my friend. Uh, it just didn't get done. We had the last video edited out. 
uh, before that happened with the Macaloni's review. Thank you so much to all my Patreon members for supporting the channel in that way. It is a, a huge help. It helps me get these these virtual tastings and tasting packs and just really um, cover some of the the, the large costs um, with running a, a channel like this. Greg, you'd know all about those costs. Um, so yeah, I, I really appreciate um, you being a, a brand new Patreon subscriber there, uh, Smirjil. And uh, I mean, I, I love the support and you you came out big with support there. So yeah, we'll have to pick a bottle. Uh, I'll give you some some options on on what I have unopened here that you can call the shot and have a, uh, a review of your choice on. Uh, but yeah, for all of our foragers, river walkers, and mountaineers, uh, thank you so much for all the support. I really appreciate it. With the big time uh, period where I was sick, uh, I wasn't putting out many reviews, so we're getting back on top of it. I have a rundown of my most recent Springbank um, tasting. Uh, I go through each of the releases, including Kilcarran 16, the Palo Cortado, uh, as well as a, a number of others, the Long Rose and Hazelburns. I kind of rank them one through eight on my favorite whiskeys of that tasting. and just talk about them more casually and uh, give some some uh, stronger, let's say, uh, opinions uh, on them. So that Patreon video is edited. I just have to upload it to Patreon this weekend. So you should see that there soon. All right, I'm going to remove that there. All right. Isla Harris, the Herrick. Want to see a cast strength one, but they said it's not planned, but instead a full sherry release. Okay. All right. Looking forward to that. Um, yeah. I mean, th there's tons of releases. We have more whiskey coming out now than ever before. Uh, it's really somewhat overwhelming to keep track of. And I'm unless you're checking every day, you're not going to keep up with it. Wraith, if I get a cheap blended scotch, I kind of want it to be a little rough, disgusting, though not to the point of feeling unsafe to drink. Do any of these blends fit that? Sadly, you're out of luck with these blends. If you wanted something rough or disgusting, um, I think Pete might be on the right, right track there. Stick to the red label. Red label, there might be a few other options out there too. Um, yeah, no, that that that's that's a that's a funny one. <laughs> that rough. And smear gel. All right. Thank you. I decided to drink some Buna Castring 2023 here tonight. Awesome. Is that the Buna uh, 12 uh, Castring 2023? If so, I have the exact same bottle, but unopened right now. Uh, a friend brought that back from Texas for me because it's not sold in Canada. Um, yeah. Thank you once again for being a Patreon member there. I uh, really appreciate that. Also, I'm, I'm actually kind of curious. Where are you located? Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Are you in North America? Are you in Europe? Uh, elsewhere? Let, let me know in the comments there. I'll, I'll keep an eye out for it. Okay, we should start wrapping this up, guys. But I have to make my final proclaimments on, on what I think won, won the day here. Really interesting nose on this. Dumb, uh, what I'm thinking is Dumbarton Rock based on what's been eliminated. Hmm. It's quality palette. It's great. It does get overshadowed by um, my preference in, in in flavor profile here with McLean's nose. It's just it's just my type of whiskey. It really is. So I think this is where you have to look for others' opinions as well on uh, Dumbarton Rock uh, and see if it lines up with your preferences more. But. If I'm going to place it here, the Dumbarton Rock is going to come in third place. In this uh, blind blend battle, second place is going to be going right to the McLean's Nose. McLean's Nose, yeah. I should. I, I'm going to have to stop waxing poetic about this whiskey, but it's just, it's everything I need in a bottle to take to the river with me or to take hiking, to put in a hip flask. It's perfect for that. It really is. I think the nose and the palate will stand up great in the outdoors. I, it's versatile. I really love this whiskey. Yeah, this is going to be second place for me today. Which means the Chaos Agent. And I suppose I should do a proper reveal because I'm assuming a lot of things here. So if we check out the green glass, you can see right there what one it is. This was third place see what it is on that chart and just to confirm 
green. It's A. A was indeed Dumbarton Rock from the Dram Moore group. Great, great uh, performance there by them. Did really well. Uh, definitely good competition for the rest of these bottles. Um, yeah, very, uh, will gladly have a bottle of that in my collection as well. Clear glass. Hopefully you can see what it is there. Pull up the chart. You can reference and to confirm. Clear. D. D was the McLean's nose. Yeah. Which could only mean one thing. It could only mean the black glass letter F is our chaos agent our disruptor throw me off the trail of other whiskey this whiskey is just the nose it had me at it had me at hello it really did what a what a stunner what a stunner yeah unfair which is why we're gonna do a, a little bit of ranking here um to finish this off because i think it's unfair to award the the top prize to the 32. Okay. If we take the over three decade old St. Thomas blend out of the equation, we're left with five whiskeys, all in the same price band for the most part, all either blended malts, blended scotch. Yeah. What to do, what to do. Let's bring some of these back into the picture quick reconsideration no longer blind we know what they are yeah if you love sherry that thompson brothers tv bsw that's a killer pickup if you have that available in your area if you're in the uk if you have royal mile whiskeys in your neighborhood um go pick it up Gold glass being naked malt, it really is overshadowed. And if you're looking at that sherry profile, it really is overshadowed by that TBBSW. Um, naked malt, as much as I appreciate it for a cheap pour, uh, easy, no nonsense, don't have to think too much about it. It, it would play sixth. Mm -hmm. so let's put that one as a sixth place. Where I'm most interested, because I know I have a particular love affair with McLean's nose. It just fits my profile. We all know that the 32-year-old, the most expensive one, as uh, Andrew Butler says here, oh dear, he, he picked the most expensive one. <laughs> yeah, it, it's not prohibitively expensive, but I mean, sometimes you do get what you pay for. Sometimes. Well, if we're considering these three here, the TBBSW and the red glass, the blue glass was our SRV5. And then our green glass was our Dumbarton Rock. McLean's nose is my favorite of the of the, the blend slash blended malt. Um, so that is going to get first place among those lower priced whiskeys. It, it is. It's just, it, it's my jam. It's, Naked Malt would be last. Speed Dram in here. Okay. SRV5. And Dumbarton. You like Trini and C here, another uh, Canadian uh, YouTube channel where they do their, uh, was it 60 second reviews, 30 second reviews? The most engaging profile for me here is the SRV5. That would be second place for me. TBBSW is not far behind. It's essentially a statistical tie. If I had both these whiskeys on the shelf, I'd be very happy because you get that ex bourbon profile with those orchard fruits. Uh, on the SRV5, and then you get 
those lovely sherry tones, um, classic blended scotch tones in this TBBSW. So if we're putting this, <clears throat> we're going to say McLean's nose is top dog in the affordable blends. <clears throat> we're going to put SRV5 just behind that. BSW from Thompson Brothers behind that. Dumbarton and then Naked Malt. Those are my thoughts on where these whiskeys all rank. They all wind up. Um, yeah, if you have Thompson Brothers available to you in your area, I am jealous. If I didn't have McLean's Nose available to me, I would also be jealous. I think they're all worthy of a look if you're looking for something more affordable at this time. Catching up on the uh, comments, and then uh, I'll do a quick thank you to you guys, and we'll wrap up here for the day. Sugar Kitty, Boon Haven 12, Castor 2022 is one of the most amazing sherry flavors. 2023 and 2021 are nice, but neither are even close to 2022. I have heard that 2022 was especially good. <clears throat> Looks like Greg had to cut out here. Understandable as we're almost at two and a half hours. All right, that was great, Matt and everyone, but I have to go. It's 9 19 p.m. here. I need to have dinner and work on some stuff. Take care, Matt, and everyone will catch up uh, on the end later on. Thank you so much, Greg, for hanging out with us tonight and for all the wonderful chat. Really appreciate it. And uh, have yourself a lovely evening uh, this, uh, this evening. Everyone's saying goodbye to Greg. And then smear gel popping in here. Yeah, Matt, I'm drinking home uh, Bonahaven 12. Uh, and I'm from Finland. I've joined to watch your live streams a couple times before. That's right, Finland. I, I, actually, I think I knew that. Should have remembered that. Awesome, Swomi. Oh, man. I, I, I have some uh, favorite Vancouver Canucks from Finland from the past, like Yarko Rutu and Sammy Salo. Um, there's some great names in the NHL too from Finland. Um, yeah, no, uh, honestly, most of my reference points for Finland all come from ice hockey. So that tells you something. There's some history too, but yeah. And we're caught up to when Andrew, uh, pointed out that I picked out the most expensive one. Sometimes. Yeah. You get what you pay for. TBBSW is the only one of those uh, I've bothered uh, buying. It, it is good. And if you like that Sherry profile, yeah, absolutely worth having. That wouldn't happen if McCallum was in the mix. It would come in last. <laughs> the McCallum hate is strong in the chat uh, with some. I don't know. Maybe someone comes to the defense of McCallum. We'll see. This was really interesting. I don't have any of these. I'll have to get a couple. Yeah, I, I think I think a couple are worth a shot, though. I mean, it really depends on, on your collection, too. If you're only drinking you know, ultra aged whiskeys, you might find them young, but if you're open to younger whiskeys, uh, or blends in general, definitely worth a look, definitely worth a look. Uh, some information here, uh, Finland, there is a government owned monopoly on alcohol, uh, shopping, which is only allowed to sell high alcohol drinks like whiskey. So they add little taxes. Interesting. We also have a, a partial government system here in BC. It's not a monopoly, but all the whiskey and, and liquor is imported into the province through the BC Liquor Corporation. They set the prices and then all the private stores have to uh, sell them uh, after having bought them from the, the government monopoly. Um, so, I mean, they, they're, they're limited in what they can bring in by what the government brings in. And they're limited on what price they can sell things because of the price that the government charges them. So it's, it's similarly controlled, let's say. And you saw Bona Haven 12 cast during 2023 for sale at our Monopoly shop for 123 euros. I bought my bottle like over a half a year ago from uh, Poland, roughly the same price. Okay. Next time sneak in Dewar's 32-year-old. Is that the uh, Dewar's 32-year-old double-double? Uh, I've heard good things about the double-double. Um, Sugar Kitty's uh, comparing uh, Finland is like the ABC states in the, in the states. Yeah, I could see that. And then uh, usually buy my bottles from all over the EU. So I'm not getting import taxes, et cetera, on top of the, yeah, the EU, uh, the, the, the system there would really help you if you're wanting to import, say, from Germany or Holland. Um, so that that's awesome. And then Pete, never joined a live stream before. I'll have to try again next time. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for joining us, Pete. 
really appreciate that um, that you 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 uh, joined this time, and I, I look forward to seeing you again on a live stream in the future. Peter White, Timu Solani, Yari Curry, uh, Yari Curry. There's so many great Finnish names in the NHL. Honestly, it, it's tough to to pick just one favorite. Um, oh gosh, I'm trying. Yerky Yoki Paka. He was playing for the Calgary Flames not so long ago. Beef Yerky, as uh, my friends nicknamed him. Um, yeah, lo love love the names. Uh, Sugar Kitty Alberta is similar to Ohio, then, but in Pennsylvania, it's also ABC. But P uh, Pennsylvania actually runs the liquor stores and makes all the money. Interesting, interesting. All right, guys, one more slide I wanted to throw up here, and really, it's just a, a thank you. Earlier in March. We passed the 2,000 subscriber mark on Whiskey on the West Coast on the channel. Something that happened far quicker than I ever thought. Actually, honestly, when I started, I couldn't have even imagined hitting 2,000 subscribers. March 6th, we hit this. Um, and I knew I had to at least thank you guys <clears throat> on, a, on a live stream. So thank you so much for all the support. Thank you for having the same obsession with whiskey that I do and for wanting to engage and talk about it. And, and, and dram uh, and, and really just share a dram long distance like this. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for all the support. And I want to just keep bringing you guys uh, as much as good content as I can. Uh, I, I do work, obviously, uh, my, my day job. And sometimes that gets in the way of me getting things ready for these reviews. But yeah, if you guys are with me, I'll, 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 keep, I'll keep going. I'll keep going as long as you guys are with me. That that that's my that's my plan at this point. Uh, so thank you. We're past two K, and uh, onward, onward and upward. So thank you for joining me on this long weekend here in Easter. Thank you so much um, for uh, for sharing your Saturday with me. And uh, with that, I think I'm gonna grab a sip of this that boutique whiskey company, thirty two year old St Thomas blend, the winner, the Chaos Agent. Throwing a bit of uh, a bit of a, a curveball in this, I'll raise this glass up to you guys. Thank you for joining me. Enjoy the rest of your Easter long weekend if you have it uh, off, and um, I hope you're enjoying it with friends and family. Uh, if you celebrate Easter, um, if not, I still hope you have a lovely weekend and a great Saturday. Until next time, guys from the West Coast, slunge.